San Diego, and the Rockies are in town, and Jed Jerko enjoys hitting against the Colorado pitchers. Three home runs this year and a 346 average. And how about the bull for the Colorado Rockies? Willene Rosario. He's been a beast for Padre pitchers. Four of his 18 home runs against San Diego Hurlers this year. Friday night, beer fest night here at the park at Petco Park in downtown San Diego. And uh, the Padres hope to improve their record against the Colorado Rockies, a team that has been toughest on them of any in the National League West, although they're only separated by three games in the National League West standings. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Grant and Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn, Dick Kenberg. We're pleased to have joined us on this Friday night. and. Uh, these uh, Rockies, they are 5 and 1 here at Petco and 12 and 4 overall. The Padres need to get something going. They're going to go to a rookie right hander. Yeah, it all starts with pitching. And the one thing that Burt Smith has going for him tonight is familiarity at the big league level. We know about his debut in Tampa. He got knocked around one plus inning, but now he's familiar. The fourth stint for the 23 year old. If he can utilize his fastball, throw it with good location, he's going to be around 93, 94. He could top out about 96. But the one thing that's important about Bird Smith, improvement. After he went down to the minor leagues in Tucson particularly, he had great numbers. Five and one with an ERA just over three. And I'll tell you what, guys, you guys know this. Pitching in the PCL, three ERA is pretty darn good. So yeah. hopefully that translates tonight. Tony really enjoyed your interview with Todd Hilton. Thank it was you. obvious he has such great admiration. He got a little emotional. <laughs> and we're going to let you talk about another Rocky that knows how to hit Troy Tolowitzki. Yeah, and, you know, he's... He's kind of taken that marker from, from Todd Helton and has started to incorporate the things that Todd does. And, you know, Tulowitzki's been hurt an awful lot in his, in his young career, but if you look at the numbers, you know, first in average, first in slugging, first in RBI, you can see the ability is there. And whenever he has that year where he's healthy, I mean, you're talking about a guy who can hit 350 and hit 40 home runs. I believe he's that good. And he's just skimming the surface as how good a player he could be. But again, health is a big factor right. with him. Well, he's been playing with a fractured rib. He was out almost a month and still posting those incredible numbers, Troy Tulowitzki. Well, the big question tonight, can Burt Smith win his first major league game? Well, Bud Black has examined the improvement in this right-hander from the University of Oklahoma. We'll get his comments when we return.
second set against the Rockies and sending 23-year-old Birch Smith to the mound. So Padres fans, you'll get another chance to take a look at him as he makes his fourth career start for the team. And he said the first few outings, of course, pretty rough. So he went back to AAA, worked on a few things, made some adjustments that he's hoping carries over tonight. And Buddy Black says, hey, this guy is 5-1 and one in his 12 starts with Tucson. That's the kind of talent we see in this young righty. You know, Birch has thrown really well uh, his last three starts in the minor leagues uh, with, with Tucson. Uh, so he's coming off, you know, some starts where, you know, the strikeouts were up, the walks were down, uh, limited the hits, uh, pitched really well. Uh, you know, the AAA staff was really impressed by how he threw. So let's, let's hope that he carries that over in a major league game. That is our Geico quote of the game. So Bert Smith looking for his first major league victory tonight, and he will have his hands full with the Rockies, of course. But the Padres looking for revenge tonight against Colorado. First pitch right after the break, it'll be Dick Enberg, Mark Grant, and Tony Gwynn with a call in the booth. So we're set to go. The first of a three game weekend series. The final suds being poured out there at Beer Fest. Uh, hundreds, uh, maybe into the thousands, uh, taking advantage of a Friday night respite here at the ballpark and uh, enjoying some of the local brews as we check the Rockies lineup brought to you by Hyundai. Walt Weiss's crew will bat in this order. Dexter Fowler leads it off. DJ LeMayhew needs to buy a consonant. Troy Tulowitzki will bat third. Michael Kadire leads the National League with a 331 batting average. William Rosario, the bull like catcher and long ball hitter, will bat fifth. Then the incredible Todd Helton on his way to the Hall of Fame, perhaps. Josh Rutledge hits seventh at second base. Charlie Blackman in left field. Uh, Cargo Gonzalez still bothered by that injured finger and Juan Acasio on the mound. And the scouting report for 23-year-old Birch Smith, fastball dominant. We mentioned that earlier. He likes to throw that. The changeup and the curveball to go along with it. And he's been working on a slider. Pitching coach Darren Balsley told me before the game, you might see a few, but I think if he can incorporate that slider along with the mid-90s fastball, a show-me curveball, which is getting better, 
should have good stuff for Bert Smith tonight. Pitched one year with the Sooners at the University of Oklahoma, then signed with the Padres just three years ago. Drafted in the 14th round. Here's the Padres defense, brought to you by the Aramco Group, Denorfia in left, Amarista Patrol Center, and Venable in right. Headley, Cedeno on the left side, Jerko and Blanks at second and first, with Nick Hundley behind the plate for Birch Smith. Unusual first name, it's his mother's maiden name. Mother, a First grade teacher, Marty. Walt Weiss, his Rockies uh, 66 and 75, three games in front of San Diego as we begin play tonight. First pitch of the game, a fastball sails outside. Fowler, with 12 home runs this year, four of them against the Padres. Clips that one foul and he's hitting 442 this year against San Diego pitching. Last time we saw him, he was hitting right around 300. He's fallen on some tough times. His average has dipped to 260. Two balls and a strike. But a few, Mark Grant or you, Tony, could have gone to Burt Smith before the game. Tonight and giving him one little piece of advice as he goes for his first big league win. What would it have been? Try to hit the glove. Tony. Look at throw your fastball first strike. Yeah. And and not overthrow. Yeah. I, I think that'd be another little nugget I would give to him. I'm sure Bud Black, the manager for the Padres, and Darren Balsey have covered all those bases. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds so simple. Three and one and a line drive to right that chases Venable back and he can't get to it. Rattles off the wall and Fowler is into second with a leadoff double. Venable retreated on the ball as if he had a beat on it, and then at the last minute, his leap didn't get him there. Well, it's hit pretty good here by Fowler. Three and one. He's ahead, ahead in the count, looking for a fastball, gets it. Really unable to run that one down. Just out of his reach. It would have been nice to get a, a first out there, eliminate the speed on the basis of Dexter Fowler. That's his 18th double bagger. Kind of struggling against righties, 233. But he got, he worked the count, fastball count, and he got it. Brings up DJ LeMayhew. Fouls it back. I don't know, is there another player in the big leagues with a surname that has five vowels? <laughs> How much does it cost for a consonant <laughs> these days? <laughs> EA. I E U. Five. They only gave me a couple. They only gave Mark yeah. one. Yeah. And Tony sometimes why? That's right. One and one. Lemayu a good average, 282. He's uh, one of five different Rockies. In double figures and stolen bases, they're doing a lot of running under Walt Weiss. They do a lot of that. They try to create action on the bases. Up the middle and squirts to deep to second and thrown behind the runner as Jerko is able to keep the ball. Wouldn't hit very hard out of center field, so the runner Fowler can only advance to third on the infield hit. LeMahieu. Well, once that ball leaves a pitcher's hand, you cannot control what happens after that. Broken bat, and you're thinking, okay, not hit hard, but right over second base. Sedanio can't get in. Once again, a heads up baseball instinct play. Turco yep. knows there's no way they're going to get LeMahieu. Yep. In case uh, Fowler gets a little froggy. Look to the back of the door yep. side. That's really all you can do. And again, we talked about it already here in the, with the first two hitters. You know, 3 1, he had to come in with the fastball, yep. gets hit hard. There, he makes a good pitch, breaks a bat. Goes where you you know kind of can't control it, and he ends up getting a base hit. And so you hear here's where you really have to settle down and try to make a pitch. Brings up to Lewitsky, and a fastball for a strike. To Lewitsky missing some 35 games during the course of the season, and still with 22 homers, 71 runs batted in, and with runners in scoring position there. Are his numbers this year solid 46 runs batted in change up in the dirt I'll have to keep an eye on that pitch the secondary pitch I like that pitch being the secondary pitch looks like a fastball 
Same arm angle. The key is throwing it for a good strike early in the count. So you can expand and maybe bounce it like that one with two strikes. Enfield back. They'll trade a run for a double play. And he drills one to deep center field. Amarista still going back, and that ball's off the wall. One run scores, quick relay, and Jerko is able to hold the runner LeMahieu with third as the Rockies, true to form, the top hitting team in the National League. The first three men up against first. Smith delivered double single double one nothing. It's a hang breaking ball yep. hanging curveball Tony right in the middle of the plate. You don't want to hang a bitch in the middle of the plate to a guy like Tula whiskey because that's what he's going to do. With. Second and third still no one out Fowler has checked in with the first run of the game. And here's the. National League's leading hitter Michael Kadire with a 331 average. That's one point above Chris Johnson of Atlanta at 330. Talk about pitch selection from Bruce Smith. I mentioned earlier, bully with the fastball. Yeah, 73% of the time. And that's quite a difference. Change up just under 20. And we saw the curveball. Just off the bat of Tulowitzki, that was over the heart of the plate. He's got to make an adjustment with that one. One ball and one strike to Kadair. No, like he got the strike call from Dale Scott on that pitch. 0 1 2. So this is where Burt Smith needs to be. Four seam fastball away, right on the outside corner. Although he missed with location because Nick was set up inside. Sorry, that was a good slot. Good slot for the fastball there. You know, if you're. If you're the hitter's going to be aggressive on that fastball. It's usually a ball he's going to roll over on. But as you saw right there, Kadir came back with the fastball, tried to go the other way with it. And that's why he's hitting 331. <laughs> exactly right. And he tries to go to right field again, curveball, but he left it in a pretty good spot for Kadir. So a couple of curveball I've seen, guys, right? A hanger to Tulowitzki off the wall. That one Kadir couldn't keep fair. Tried to go to right field. One thing's for sure, this Rocky team, they love to hit the fastball. And they'll press a breaking ball. Mistake as well. Yeah, you leave it in the middle of the plate. It's like keeping the ball down is going to be important. Another foul. That'll be a out of blanks range back of the Padre dugout. That was a nice pitch on the inside part of the plate, tying up Kadir. Career year for the man who Played most of his professional career in the Minnesota Twins organization. Broke in with Minnesota in 2001. Ground ball sharply to short. They're going to go to third and get the out there as the run scores. As Cedeno takes uh, Tulowitzki out of the play, but LeMahieu scores. And it's 2 nothing Colorado. Give Kadir his 75th RBI. Well, he sharply hit ball and on contact there, LeMahieu scoring. I thought he was going to go to the plate initially, Sedania. I thought at first as well. It's kind of surprised Lema um, to the whiskey gave himself up so I know, easily. I Maybe slide for what the heck I'm yeah. out. <laughs> Not trying to hurt myself sliding. He was surprised that the throw was there. Yeah, a lot of times they just go ahead and go to first on that, but you know, he already got one run in and a chance for a good chance for a second run to score there. Now you're double play ball from getting yourself out of the inning. See Walt Weiss is still wondering why two whiskey was going to third on the ground ball short right there. Rosario's numbers 21 home runs on the year. And as we mentioned, four of those against Padre pitching. Hey, one of the Blake Street Bombers back in the day with the big cat, Iris Galarraga, Dante Bichette, Vinny Castilla, Larry Walker. That was quite a uh, combination they had. Yeah. 
Any one of those guys in the middle of that lineup then. The guys like Walt Weiss setting the table for those guys. Oh, that's right, yeah. Mike Lansing. Mike Was any on those, Lansing, those teams? yes. You know, Eric Young. Yep. The other guy. That'll be out of play. Rockies with the early lead in this first inning. A couple of runs. Fowler double. The Mayhew infield hit. Tulowitzki doubled in one. And the second run scores on Kavalier's fielder's choice. Kavalier at first base with one out. The Rockies right from the opening series way back in April have been tough on the Padres. 12 and 4 on the season. Another fastball. Okay, let me ask you guys. You run the Colorado Rockies. You're the general manager. Do you beef on, on pitching or do you just load up on boppers? Tony? <laughs> I'm loading up on pitching because I think you can't win a World Series just swinging a bat. Good I, pitchers, I, I shut totally down agree. good hitters. And, and you, know, I, you still have to you still have to come up with some pitching. And I, I look for guys that throw hard with Sinker natural slider, sinkers. Yeah. 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 Keeping the ball down they, in Colorado. They tried that before. Because I also think you don't have to be a bopper to be successful at that ball no, yard. You'll you still be able to produce some runs. Yes. Yes. I agree. But it's also how they do on the road as well. It's probably more so how they do on the road. That's where pitching really helps you on the road. Swing and a miss. And Smith has his first strikeout. And speaking of their road play. They're 25 and 44 on the road this year. Hey, this is a nice changeup from Bert Smith. It's got the four seam rotation. We'll lean Rosario way out in front of it. Watch the arm action coming through. Looks like a fastball. It's a changeup. Looks like a pump. Feels like a sneaker. Todd Hilton. As you pointed out in your interview, he was drafted in the first round by the Padres. He told me that the main reason why he went to Tennessee was his parents were going through a divorce. He wanted to stay close to home, or he might well have had this great career in a San Diego uniform. And it's obvious his great admiration for you, Tony. And uh, I found that fascinating that he goes back to day one and Find the ball early. <laughs> Get that. And see where that ball is. And you, did you uh, look at the helmet first or the hat of the pitcher? Yeah, and then pick I, up? I, yeah I just kind of came up with that on my own. I hated looking all around, so I just kind of focused on the logo of the pitcher's hat. And then I didn't have far to go to the release point. And again, I, I'm amazed. Even I'm, I'm 53 now, and I'm amazed at how many kids can, you know, players today can come back and. Tell me something that I said at some point in my career. Well, yeah, he says he had a look on the cap. It doesn't surprise me because so many people have talked to you and they're going to take your advice and run with it. And just what you've meant to obviously not the city of San Diego, but the, the game of baseball itself. So people, I mean, you're quite an influence on people. Well, you know, you, I, I mean, this, I've been saying the same thing since I've been playing. I've done, you know, thousands of camps and clinics. You know, gone to you know summer conventions to talk about the art of hitting, and sometimes it's the simplest of things that stick. Sometimes the most complicated part is like when we were down talking with to Todd today, is that he's always had the ability to use the whole field, and he's taken advantage of that regardless of if he's going well or not. He kind of sticks to the game plan, and when you do that, that's usually when you kind of figure out who you are and. How much success you're going to have, and it's amazing to me how how many players that play the game, some 400 offensive guys, oh, it's more than that, get opportunity to go up to the plate and swing the bat. Don't use that practice of trying to use the whole field. It's just amazing to me. Bosley out to talk with Bert Smith after the four pitch walk to Helton. So first and second, two outs, and Josh Rutledge the batter. Hitting with some power, seven home runs in just 71 games. I 
it's uh, six in a row out of the strike zone from Smith. Trying to get out of this first inning with just two on the board. Seven in a row. You know, Tony, you mentioned something to me earlier when we looked at Bert Smith prior to going on the air. You said, "Hey, he's kind of short arm." Yeah. I said, "Yeah, with that arm action of his, and that's not a good sign going to the phone this early." Um, and, and with that short arm action and the drop and drive delivery, sometimes you can work underneath the mm -hmm. baseball, and that messes up the release. Point. That's what it looks like to me, especially on the breaking balls that he's thrown today. He's kind of gotten underneath them, and consequently, they've hung in the middle of the zone. You know, that last fastball you got on top of that one. And it's a fine line. It, it is. Three balls and a strike. Two on, two out. Two in. That's in there. Well, hopefully he gets out of this inning with just two runs. The next thing you know, possibly seven innings because. He's got to be economical if he goes out there for another inning. Next pitch, 32. Swing and a miss, strike three. So he strikes out a couple in this first inning. But the Rockies score two on three hits and they lead two. Padres coming up. Venables to lead it off. Down by two. San Diego brought to you by your San Diego County Lexus dealer inviting you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today by Petco where the healthy pets go by Farmers Insurance contact your local agent at 888-96 Farmers and by the Experience Buick lease it's a new lease on luxury yeah, the gas lamp district on this Friday night will be buzzing after this ball game is over. Fans pour out into all the great restaurants in the local area as we check on the Padres lineup brought to you by Toyota tonight. Here's how Bud Black's men will hit. Venable will start things with Chris Denorfia, then Jed Jerko, Chase Headley, Bats cleanup, Kyle Blanks, Alexi Amarista, Ronnie Cedeno, then Nick Hundley, eighth, and Bert Smith against Juan Nicasio, 26 year old right hander from the Dominican Republic who is eight and seven on the year. First pitch is outside ball one. He's 2 0 oh lifetime against the Padres, has one win this year. Better pitcher at home than he is on the road. At least statistically, on the road this year, he's 4 and 5 with a 5 4 3 RA mark. And the scouting report hot fastball 93 94. His slider is probably his best pitch, and he tries to be aggressive in the zone, although some numbers in the minor leagues, and he's had some injuries as well. Uh, has a chance to be a little erratic at times, so patience is going to be a key tonight for the Padre hitters. That ball hit well to right field. That chases Kadir back, and that ball's gone. 
A long laser just over the right field wall into the jack deck, and Venable touches them all. Number 21 for Will Venable. Well, the ball carried mightily in the day game on Wednesday, and it appears this hot weather has sh shrunken Petco Park. I think that was a change of it looked coming out of the hand like a fastball, but he took a if it was a fastball, he took a little bit off of that and Will Venable was right on. You know, I, I don't think I've seen a ball hit that well on the line that got out in such a hurry yeah. to right field. You know, we've seen him to left field. But that ball had that sound, and as soon as you saw Kadir kind of turn his back, <laughs> aim a number. He knew he had a yeah. chance, yeah. That was a laser. You don't see many of those here in this ballpark. No Fowler's ball in the first inning. He uh, there's a ground ball fair past the dive of third baseman LeMayu. And Kristen North is on his way to second. He's going to try for three. Here comes the throw in the third. He's in there. Well, you can see a triple possibly happening there. When you get too close to that fence as it's coming around. Another changeup right there. The North hits this ball right down the line. Blackman gets too close to this ball in third and in, in the corner. The Norfia makes up his mind he's going to go for three. Gets there pretty easily. The Hard and Hustle Award winner does just that. He hustles his way into a triple, and the Padres, with no one out, have a chance to tie it up. Jed Jerko. Infield back. They'll give up the tying run for an out. Ball one. Fastball. So a line shot home run by Venable. A kangaroo triple down the third baseline into the left field corner from Denorfia. As the Padres answer the attack by the Rockies against Burt Smith in the top of the first. It looks like Rosario and Dale Scott, the home plate umpire, are having a nice discussion about that last fastball to Jerko. He won the on the inner half of the plate and it was on the outer half. I thought it was a pretty good pitch. I thought it was too. And he didn't get it with the way he was set up and the he way he set received up it. in and the way he went to catch it. Correct. And look Tony you're absolutely right Fox tracks by Southland technology pitch number one in the strike zone. Second pitch could have been called. Yeah. Cool. Two and one now as Jerko swings and misses. By the way Venables home run is the eighth time that he's led off. With a home run. Number twenty one on the season. By far a career year for Wilt Venable. That'll be out of play deep down the right field line. Well, eight home runs hit on the Wednesday game with San Francisco, six by the Giants, most ever by a visiting team at Petco as the ball was flying in the hot, dry weather. Looks as if we might see some home runs this weekend as well. Swing and a miss. Jerko goes down swinging for the first out. And that gives us a chance to introduce the Rockies defense brought to you by Hyundai. In the outfield, left to right, it's Blackman, Fowler, and Kadire. LeMayhew, Tulowitzki, Rutledge, and Helton are on the horn. Rosario behind the plate for Nicasio. Todd Helton now with 2,500 base hits and counting. Joining some elite company. Yeah, that's a heck of a career. It's been fun to watch. Chase Headley, six for nine in his career against Nicasio with a couple of home runs. Even a fly ball would do the job here to tie up the game. And he falls behind two strikes. Ninth home run of the season on Wednesday. That snapped a string of 99 at bats without a homer. Strike three. Three straight pitches. Headley never got his bat off the, his shoulder. So it looked mighty bright when Denorfia followed Venable's uh, home run with a triple, but he's still there at third with two out. Boy, pretty good pitches, and I think these are legitimate strikes when you take a look at it. Right on the outside corner, very surprised that Chase Headley didn't take a hack at it. 
Definitely high enough. Yep. Mid thigh high. So they won't tie it on and out. It's up to Kyle Blanks. Jerko and Headley striking out with Denorfia third. Ball one. Blanks has had good success against the Rockies. This year he's uh, hitting 375 against Rocky pitching with a couple of home runs. Outside again. There are his season numbers eight homers and 34 runs batted in. Number 35 sitting there at third for him in the form of Chris Denorfia. Fouled into the glove. There's that slider. He hadn't given in when he's been behind the count 2 0. Casio wearing a infielder's number 12. I don't see many pitchers carrying those numerals. Threw that one right by him. 94. So a pitch away from striking out the side after giving up a home run and a triple. Full. Next pitch will be the 20th from Nicasio. Just looking ahead in the game, marking the pitches by Nicasio. When he goes six innings, he's a totally different pitcher than uh, when he doesn't. He's 11 and 2 when he goes six innings, less than six. He's 3 and 12. Just stays alive. And sometimes it can be, you know, this, uh, this pitch right here. What he does with blanks right here could determine what, which kind of outing it's going to be. Well, he's shown confidence in that slider behind the count 2 0 for a strike. 3 2. Might break it out here. And Marista would be next. Burt Smith getting one of those runs back. It's now 2 1. That, that slider is a good pitch, too. Yes, no. This here, three two. Most hitters are trying to shorten their stroke up a little bit, so they're probably going to get a better look at it. And another foul ball. Another fastball. I see Rosario. Boy, he is getting into the ear. Part cheerleader, part pitching coach, Rosario. After that pitch, you see where he was set up yep. down and away? Yep. That ball was down the middle of the plate, knee high, and Rosario was like, let's go. That's what you have to do. Come as on a catcher. now. Yeah, that's your responsibility. Boy, he is into it. He gets that ball where you want it. Fly ball to right. Kadir coasts in under it. And the inning comes to an end. Padres get a leadoff home run from Will Vanderbilt, his 21st of the season. And after one at Petco, Rockies two, Padres one.
you see Birch Smith there getting a little pep talk from pitching coach Darren Balsley. And one of the things Birch told me earlier that Balsley was really keying in on, he said, was his pitch selection. And he said, of course, throwing my fastball for strikes and my off-speed pitches, same deal. He goes, I got to locate those pitches. And I think that's something that, of course, Nick Hunley can work with him as well. But, Tony, I think you'll really appreciate this. One of the things Birch said he really noticed the biggest difference with between pitching in the minors and now coming up to the majors is he said hitters are a lot more patient. He goes, I can't make mistakes like I do in the minors because they will tee off on it. And, of course, we saw a couple of those, the hanging breaking ball to Tolowitzki earlier there in the first inning. But I found that interesting. You know, a lot of times they have to learn the hard way. And that is you, know, you have to locate. And if you don't locate at this level, good hitters make you pay. And the harder you throw it, the better they like it. Yeah. Flattens out. Yeah. If there's no movement to it, you get to 105 and guys are still find a way to square it up. That'll be fouled out of play. It's uh, going back to the simplicity of the game. As uh, you see this pitch hanging in the middle of the plate for Tulowitzki, who drives the double to center field to knock in a run. The pitchers have to locate, and batters have to swing at strikes. Right. Pretty simple game, isn't it? When, it can, when you break it down, <laughs> when you break it down to the simplest form, that's that's it. Pitchers have to throw strikes. They have to throw the ball in the plate. Change up Peck foul. And if I were Burt Smith tonight, Nick Hundley behind the plate, he knows the game plan. I mean, they go over the scouting reports in their meetings with pitchers and catchers, and Darren Balsley sits down with the starting pitcher. And believe me, Nick Hundley sticks with the game plan. He knows the game plan. I wouldn't see him shaking off at all tonight. Watch out. A long drive. And a fan brought a glove and made a good play. Nice going there. You saved the people around you yeah. with that catch. That young girl in front of him, that was aimed right at her. He reached right over and snared it. <laughs> Take a picture of that face. <laughs> two and two now to Charlie Blackman, former so, star at Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets. And if I were Burt Smith, I'm taking all the thinking out of the game, looking at fingers. And throw into the glove. Yep. Whatever Dick Conley puts down, I'm going to throw it. Brown ball to first. Blanks will flip it to Smith for the out. Oh, what's wrong with that? Until you get a feel for what's going on up here. Not, nothing wrong with letting Dick Conley call the game. Right. You work with Nick until you get a feel for what you think you could do. Now, obviously, there's situations where you might want to throw a different pitch or you know come at him a different way. But you know you got the ball in him. You, you have the ultimate decision. But you might as well go with somebody who's been behind the plate a little while, kind of understands how it works. Pitcher Juan Nicasio, five hits this season, five for 31. He's knocked in three. Ninety-two on that strike. Boy, he really does drop his elbow a lot. Kind of almost, underneath. Yeah. Almost looks like he pushes the ball a little bit. And another fastball strike. And from a hitter standpoint, when you see a guy get underneath the ball like that, you know usually it's not going to have much movement. Uh, the jitsy's going to be and it's straight be up, probably too. Yeah. Three fastballs, strike three. Ignacio caught looking. Three strikeouts for. Bert Smith is a strikeout pitcher based on his minor league numbers. Oh, even though it's the pitcher, four seam fastball, uno dos, adios. Senior Headley was set up there. He's sitting up away. almost off the plate away. And it leaked over the heart of the leaked, plate. Leaked over the heart of the plate. Now it gets a good hitter when that happens. Kabaya. He usually, <laughs> usually gets it pretty hard. Yeah. Fowler lined a double over Will Venables head in right field the first time. And scored one of the two runs in that first inning. And 
Another shot to right. Venable is there, and that ball sinks on him. A line drive out. One, two, three. The Rocky score in the second. It'll be Amarista, Sedeno, and Nick Hundley coming up. Bottom of the second. Charger fans, it's time to bolt up. It's that time each week. Join our own Laura McKeeman as she talks with Coach Mike McCoy and the team about the road ahead from the front office to down on the field. Chargers Insider, Thursday at 3.30 and 10, right here on Fox Sports San Diego. And, of course, uh, Laura will be following up on the very first game of the season on Monday night as they host the Houston Texans. We had... Uh, Dwight Freeney, one of the all-time great pass rushers, uh, threw out the first pitch before the game tonight. Yep. And he went up and tackled Clayton <laughs> Richard and uh, a former quarterback, Richard uh, Freeney, must have been salivating yep. just looking at him. Well, we wish the Chargers a whole lot of luck with their season getting ready yep. to start. And Marista opening up the second inning as uh, here is uh, Freeney's form, former star at Syracuse. Hey, not bad. See, in a baseball jersey, he doesn't look that big. About 6'5 and 235, 240. He's not a, you know, probably quick. Very oh, quick. Quick on quick. Defensive yeah. end at 230, 240. Yep. Calling him an okay. outside linebacker. Yeah, now he's a linebacker. Filed by Amarista, 2-2. Two two. Well, we wish you luck. Hope the Chargers have a great year. That perpetuates itself. The Aztecs do well, the Chargers do well, the Padres do well. It just feeds on itself. Two and two. Up and in. And uh, speaking of winners, tomorrow night, folks, we hope you'll be here. A 5 40 game will be on at 5 o'clock. The East Lake All Stars, the United States Little League champions, are going to be here. Chance to salute them. They're going to take batting practice. It'll be a big night. Left field and it's falling in a hurry, but Blackman able to run it down for the out. One away to Ronnie Cedeno. They've done a couple of hits with the little leaguers already since they've been oh, back in you? town. It's been what a great bunch. What an experience for yeah. them, huh? It, it, it really was. We made our city and county proud. And also, uh, they're giving away that luchador mask, that Padres luchador mask. But uh, Mark Grant has been just uh, <laughs> so excited all season long, waiting for the date to come. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who's excited more than me. Who's that? Eddie Ortega. Eduardo Ortega and Juan Avila. <laughs> the broadcast there's, is there. <laughs> oh, there's Carlos Hernandez on the left, and then Eddie. Look, he's got his mask right next to does him. Does he? Up there. Look at yeah, on his computer. Yeah. 
right there. A luchador. Cuidado, kid. Hola, Marcos. How are you feeling? <laughs> love it every time, right, Tony? It's great. I love Eddie. <sighs> Marcos. Como esta? How are you feeling? <laughs> one and one. So Daniel takes outside and did not go. So Homer done that long ball fest on Wednesday afternoon, his second home run, but uh, that would have been out uh, under any conditions, well back into the second deck in left field. Two and two. You know what else I know this guy's about, uh, Rosario? Uh, you talk about he gets that ball back quickly to Nicasio, and he gets right back down in that crouch. He did it that last pitch there. It seems like he just wants his pitcher to get in a rhythm. And I always like this as well. A catcher who fired the ball back. A little bit of fuzz on it. Yeah. Not this lollipop stuff, you know. Give it get get it to me. Look, when you catch 82 games at Coors Field, and you know how wild those games could be. <laughs> I bet you get in the habit of firing that ball back. Another foul. You saw Rosario there shaking his head. He wanted his pitcher to shake him off and just to give the hitter something more to think about. Nice grab there, sir. He's even got a receptacle to keep all the baseballs he's going to catch. And another foul. Let's go back and uh, the senior league representative there making the catch. Uh, rock and fire. You know, charge those line drives. <laughs> That's great. Swing and a miss, and Cedeno is the third strikeout victim of Juan Nicasio. Well, Nick Hundley steps up. He's had some success against Nicasio in Colorado earlier this year. Touched them all. But Nicasio and the Rockies would prevail and won that game. 2 1, Colorado leading here in the home half of the second. Base is empty. For Hundley and two out. Ground ball to the third baseman, LeMayhew, across to Helton, a little high, but Helton, with all his experience, able to change his footwork and complete the 5 3 put out, and we've completed two. The top of the third inning, and it's time now for the Saquon Casino Daycation stat of the game. The Padres, the last four games, Padre pitching has struck out at least 10. That equals the best ever 
in franchise history. So Bert Smith and company tried to make it five straight games and Smith off to a good start has three strikeouts through two innings. Well you can't get a strikeout unless you get strike one right. But that might sound a little funny but it's true because. You get the two strikes it tells me that some of these pitchers that. Rack up those strikes. they got the wipeout pitch right they put the hitter on the defensive. Then they put him away with the punch out. How quick you get strike two quick you can strike, get to strike three. That's right. So. Yes, Monty Grandal. He's been working out, even though uh, he can't do a lot of heavy lifting or running with that uh, knee surgery after that accident in Washington at home plate. But uh, he told me he's very confident he's going to be ready starting next season. Although at the time of the operation, uh, all the reports were it'd be at least mid-year before he could play again. But that just might be an athlete's natural optimism. Yeah. Let's hope he's right. I hope he's right. Yeah. DJ LeMayhew infield hit up the middle the first time and scored one of the two runs in the first inning. Good fastball down in the zone. Now, oh, two, you got a whole bunch of different ways you can go. Up the ladder, at the feet, at the belt buckle. You name them, Wood. So this gets down to what we talked about throwing quality strikes. Lines that went down the right field line and a fair ball into the corner. Venable digging it up. And LeMahieu has a stand up double to start things here in the third. Not only do you have to learn how to throw quality strikes, you have to learn how to throw quality balls as well. And that's the perfect example. 0 and 2. It was a breaking ball, but just catches too much on the plate. This is where you have to trust your catcher, Hundley, and get it down. Look at the little hump in that. On contact, upper thigh high, away. He's protecting. He takes the ball that way. That's when he has to bounce because LeMahieu is on the defensive there. Here's the other thing, like we talked about two strikes, you're more apt to slow your stroke down, shorten it up. And the bad thing about that breaking ball, not only did it hang, but he tipped it. He tipped it before he threw it. And that, when you change your motion or slow your motion down, hitters are going to pick up on that in a hurry. How did he tip it? Because he slowed his delivery down. And, and you know, Tony, you're right, because it's not only his arm axe, but his delivery it's, as a whole. It's got to be It's got to be out of that same window every time. And that one, he slowed it down and gave LeMahieu a good, right. easy look at yeah. it. What was that first pitch called a ball? That's right in the middle of the plate. You can't throw a much better strike. And there's a strike one and one. And there's a strike that's a ball. <laughs> My goodness. Well, it make up call perhaps. Tulowitzki double to center field. Knocked in his 72nd run of the season. The middle of the lineup. He's got 72. Kadire now with 75. Rosario 74. Three men in the 70s. The Padre leader is. Will Venable with 51. Yeah, too risky. We're talking about a guy that's missed 30 some odd games too. Mm -hmm. so. He's always been a protective player. Gonzalez is out of the lineup. He has 70, so that's four men in the lineup with 70 runs batted in or more. Two and one in the dirt. Change it. Well, living dangerously here to Troy Tulowitzki. Three fastballs, a changeup to go to three and one. I was thinking we're going to throw a fastball. It's not going to be in. It's going to be out over the plate. All over the map, too. Changeup. Had him out in front. Good pitch. Watch the arm angle. Watch the arm delivery on this changeup as compared to the one he threw the May. He got it right out there, out front. Good release point. Stayed on top of it and then turned it over. And that pitch right there put the thought into Whiskey's head that you know, maybe he won't come back with a fastball. Maybe he'll throw a changeup. Full count to Troy Tulowitzki. Kadire on deck. Lead off double. Lemayhew there in second. And ball four. Second walk given up by Smith. 
Oh, the runner on second base and nobody out. Let's go back to the first pitch. Birch Smith versus uh, Tulowitzki. Ball one. Why? Well, it was. Fastball evens it up at one one. Another fastball trying to locate it. That wasn't actually a bad pitch, but Nick wanted it inside. There's the changeup. Showing some confidence coming back after bouncing one. And then once again, off of the fastball, Bert Smith all over the map with that heater tonight. The Fox track showing that the six pitches, four were strikes. Yep. Dale Scott, a tough pitcher's umpire so far. Chopped to short, not hit very hard, so Kadire has to go across to get Kadire 6 3 and the runners advance. I'm surprised today you didn't go to second base. The ball wasn't hit that hard. So LeMayu moves to third, Tulowitzki to second. With one on, and Willian Rosario the batter. Rosario struck out the first time. Two one, the Rockies lead here in the third. Infield. We play back, except for Blanks about bag high at first. He would come to the plate. Twenty one home runs leading all major league catchers. And seventy four runs batted in the second there. Tim Stauffer begins throwing in the Padre bullpen. Pretty good numbers all the way around for Rosario, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Two ninety two average. Twenty four hits. You, know, you figured he would be a guy capable of hitting twenty home runs. He may be a 30 home and, run hitter. And possibly in the future could be. So 56 pitches already for Bert Smith, and he has only one out here in the third. So Stauffer getting ready in case. Up. 0 and 2. This would be a big strikeout if Burt Smith can come up with the goods. Took care of Rosario the first time. Mayhew to Lewitsky in scoring position and swung on and missed strike three. Number four for Smith. Nice job there by Smith. Remember earlier I said watch Nick Cumley's fingers and watch the glove. Before that pitch, guys, Nick Cumley did just that. He positioned his glove up out of the zone. Bert Smith, nice job following directions, hence the strikeout. Now to get rid of Todd Helton. And you said he'd be more apt to throw that fastball up when yep. he got underneath it like he did. Elton walked on four pitches his first time. Here's uh, Nick Hundley. We talked about him motioning with his glove. He gave the sign. He wanted it up. Almost got out of the crouch a little bit. Good stri big strikeout. Ooh. So Daniel was breaking towards second base, and uh, Birch Smith came to the plate. The left side was wide open. Most seasons with the same team active 19 years for Cheater, Mariano Rivera, and Helton 17 consecutive seasons with the Rockies. There's three examples of guys who wow. played on one team. Everybody talks about that doesn't happen anymore. Well, good pitch. We out in front of the 2 0 changeup. Oh, this changeup seems like Bert Smith getting the feel for it, throwing it behind in the count. The thing I like about his changeup, guys, is that it's got the same four seam action. He doesn't hold it differently. Some guys don't hold the two seam. No, he holds his four seam fastball going that way, and then also the changeup as well. So as a hitter sees the same speed, or the same spin rather, out of the hand. Well, that's why I was talking about the double that LeMahieu hit because. You throw that same kind of like four seam change up that doesn't have a movement. Right. 
and you let the hitter know by slowing down your delivery that that's what's coming. That's the easiest one to vax man and do some serious damage. But. Two and two, and here's where Helton now with two strikes on him, a dangerous opposite field hitter. Yep. Second and third, two out. The Rockies, fastball away. Oh, breaking ball! Pulls it to the right side, and Jerko throws him out. Good work by Smith. Pitches on a second and third with one out. in the top of the third and it is time now for our AT&T Twitter poll question tonight and this is going to be a tough one because we want to hear from you as to who you think is the best shortstop in the majors right now and there are your choices just of course chime in on Twitter using the hashtag if you think it's Troy Tulowitzki who we're seeing tonight in the sixth spot hashtag Tulo and SS or if it's Ian Desmond in your opinion hashtag Desmond SS Use the hashtag with the last name and SS, and we will, of course, check those results later in the show. But, guys, what's your opinion when you take a look at those four faces and four dynamic talents, really? Well, I look at um, age comes into play. Yep. Tulo is one heck of a shortstop. Don't get me wrong. Um, I like Andrelton Simmons. We've seen uh, Gene Segura. Uh, he, he's a... Uh, Close to being the complete package. Yeah. Still got a lot of things to learn yeah. still. No contest. Two to Witzke. Yeah. He's the best shortstop I mean, in the majors. No contest? No. Really? Two to Witzke. I mean, he's perennial all star. He drives in runs. He fields his position. He's done it over the years. It hasn't been one or two years. He's. Yeah. Still got to stay healthy, though. That's the, the one bugaboo with him. This is the right dick. He's had years where he's at 30 homes, driven in 100. Does he have the same range, you think, as he? As I think he does. I think he does. He's not a small guy. He's a big shortstop. No, he's big. Yeah, 6'3". Just like Ramirez Maybe in that way, he's a big shortstop. Chopper by Bert Smith foul. And, you know, he's just 29 years of age. It's not like he's uh, tripping over his gray beard either. Well, see, that's the thing that concerns me, though. Only 29 in the injuries. And playing in an offensive park, too. Yeah. You really shouldn't be surprised. And I think he's good on the road as well as at home. But, you know, some guys' numbers have been, you know, inflated a little bit playing in, in Denver. Good. Swing on the ball by Bird Smith in his second major league at bat, and he's thrown out by third baseman LeMahieu for the first out here in the bottom of the third. But a good swing on it, hitting for his first major league hit. Here's Will Venable. Homered into the jack deck his first time up. Well, 
trying to take a little extra time going up to the plate, give Bert Smith a chance to sit down. That ball jumped out of here, a low line drive. Etched out by Martin Prado for the August Player of the Month in the National League. His work in August, hitting 381 with eight home runs, uh, did not go unnoticed. The San Diego Hall of Champions named him the August Athlete of the Year. Ground ball right side, Hilton feeding Nicasio for the second out. That's eight in a row now, retired by Nicasio since Denorfia's triple. Fox College Saturday returns tomorrow. Fox Sports 1 as 13th ranked Oklahoma State, the Cowboys, battles Texas San Antonio, followed by Louisiana Lafayette taking on K State, while West Virginia battles 16th ranked Oklahoma on Fox. Then in the nightcap, Washington State looks to upset 25th ranked USC. Fox Sports is your home for college football. All season long. More teams, more football. Right here on Fox. Yeah, four games tomorrow. How yeah. about that? Just settled in and don't turn the dial. You got football for you from uh, early hours to the evening. Yep. The Norfia bounded a triple into the left field corner his first time. One and one the count on him. Casio settling into a nice. Pitching rhythm here with eight straight retired. Mm. Fastball and the North, you're going for the downs. Again, if you weren't with us at the very start, receiving the Padres Hustle and Heart Award, every team naming one player fitting that category. Right, three called. And Nicasio continues to mow him down. That is his fourth strikeout. Padres go in order in the third. On Fox Sports San Diego, brought to you by Saquon, real friendly, real close, and by the Aramco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse.
three innings complete here at Petco tonight. The Rockies two runs four hits have left four. Padres a run on two hits have stranded one. They had a chance to tie it in the first after Venable's home run. Denorfia with a triple with no one out, but Jerko and Headley struck out and blank slide out. And that's where we stand. 2 1 with the lower third of the order. Josh Rutledge, Charlie Blackman, and Juan Nicasio to bat against Burt Smith here in the top of the fourth. I think speed. I think we're going to see more of that change up. Good. I like it. Rutledge struck out his first time. So Bert Smith was uh, part of the draft class two years ago, 2011. Corey Spangenberg, Austin Hedges, the young catcher. That would be out of play. Joe Ross, who had a big win in the playoffs for Fort Wayne. And Matt Whistler, another highly regarded pitcher in the system. Those are the names you hear most often. And uh, Smith, even though he was the 443rd player picked, the 14th round. First to make it to the big leagues. Much better. Change up, good, good arm action on it. To righties and lefties alike, it doesn't matter, and that's a good sign. You have to throw that to righties. A lot of pitchers are reluctant. And you know, Tony, I, I remember being told many times, "Oh, never throw your change up to a righty." I wish that wasn't the case, because they think it would go down to their hitting zone and to the swing path. High fly ball to center, Amarista. Near the track to make the catch. Now for a long time, lefties, lefties, they didn't want to throw left handers change up because they thought left handers swings were down and in. That one took that ball pretty good. But big part of the yard. Charlie Blackman grounded to first base his first time. Dodgers, uh, interesting series in Cincinnati. And Mike Leak, local product, beat the Dodgers tonight 3 2. For the Reds, fly ball to right, routine. Venable comes up for it. Two away. Another first pitch changeup. <laughs> Bert Smith is probably looking back. Hey, you know what? Going soft a little bit. It's kind of fun. Taking the you know sting out of these uh, Colorado Rockies bats, rather than trying to throw the heater by him all day now, long. Now, do you think this is Hunley oh, leading here, or but do you it, think absolutely? I, I totally do think you? that is. But it's going to install confidence, instill confidence in, in Burt Smith. Absolutely right, Tony. Like I said, don't shake off. Just go with Hunley. Nicasio looked at three straight fastballs, striking out his first time. It's like Nuke Lelouch and Crash Davis. <laughs> Don't think, B, just throw. That fastball running up and in on the Casio. 0 1 2. Casio was better off when he was just taking pitches. That one almost <laughs> ripped his jersey <laughs> open. Oh and my he swings goodness. and misses strike three. That's number five for Bert Smith tonight. Middle of the fourth, 2 1, Rockies.
His 23rd home run that drove in one run. And then the Rockies got another on the ground out by Kadire. As LeMayhew scored, Will Venable for the Padres led off the first with his 21st home run. Clearing the right field wall, the low line drive. And that's been it, 2 1. As we go to the home half of the fourth inning, it'll be Jerko, Headley, and Blanks against Juan Nicasio, who's retired nine straight since Denorfia's triple in the first inning. Thirty-one forty-one. A lot of hits. And still the best statue out there. We've seen them all, Tony. I like it. It's the best one. I know we, we talk about it all the time, and it never gets old. It's not often that you're pleased by your own photograph or your own if you're fortunate enough to be yeah. deserving of a statue but that artist really captured you in your swing. Speaking of swings Tony Jed Jerko what type of an adjustment does he have to take the approach right center up? right, right center. center just make it simple. You keep standing there taking looking for that one ball that you're hoping to get the pull. Meanwhile, you're going to get a bunch of balls out over the plate that you know you can go to right center with. And he's good at it. He didn't capture the hand with that palm up. See, you got to listen more than the players did when I was playing. Jerko looks at a strike, two and two. Yeah, 2 1. Not going to give in with a fastball. Throws a little slider. He's going to be a good hitter. Just, he's just got to feel his way through these little tough times. And the count full to Jerko. And that ball was right on the line. Fox track. Well, well have been punched out. Looks like Rosario maybe brought that pitch out of the zone. But you're right. Good pitch. High pop up. Shallow in center. Shortstop Tulowitzki takes charge. One away. Ten straight retired. Well, that brings up Chase Headley, who's had some home run success against Nicasio and going the opposite field at Coors Field for a couple of home runs. Okay, how do you want to throw this guy? Edley didn't get a swing his first at bat. Three, three straight strikes Straight taken. him out of three pitches last time. What's he going to do different this time? And they were all paint. I'm, I would think he would try to do the same thing, but like we just showed on the highlights, though, he has taken him deep the opposite way twice. First pitch breaking ball. For a strike. Balls and a strike now to Headley. He's pitching him way differently now. Change up there. First pitch slider. Second pitch fastball. Third pitch change up. Let's see if it's fastball away here. Oh, slider. Curveball. Slider at 82. The tilt on this one out of the hand. You can see the rotation. Boy. Good tilt. Yep. Breaker stays alive. Fastball two and two. Carol Blanks on deck. Padres trailing the Rockies here in the fourth. Two to one. Now, if I'm making a pitch here, I'm throwing a fastball off the plate because last time the balls were off the plate a little bit. And Chase knows that, right? He got called third. I'm yeah. going off the plate with a fastball. Away. Right. What'd you say? Okay. Oh, he's shaking off. Looks like he wanted to go away. And look at Rosario. It's like, <laughs> this is comical. Uh -uh, now, come on. Slider. Backdoor slider right here. 
And the count full to Headley, who has walked 53 times more than any Padre. So that's one of those. If he throws that for a strike after that one, he threw inside. Hey, tip your cap. Fastball in. Struck him out. Second time. Headley's gone out on strikes. Five strikeouts for Nicasio. Well, even though he didn't hit the glove, look at where he hit and look where he threw it. It was in, right? Ball is up, up the left. Oh, that's a ball as ball far strike. as if take, yeah. yeah. Just young hitters sitting at home, remember ball is right. If you can stay in the strike zone, hitting becomes a whole lot easier. Kyle Blanks. And the reason why it's so tough up here is because pitchers are so good at starting balls in the zone. At first they look like strikes and then they run out of the zone. They end up being balls. And the ground ball to short to Lewitsky across to Helton. 12 retired in a row by Nicasio. One, Nick Hunley back behind the plate, and he had a busy morning today as he and about 10 of his teammates hosted the fourth annual Padres shopping spree there at the Target in Mission Valley. They took 90 students from the Monarch School here in San Diego to pick out, get this, two tops, two bottoms, socks and shoes, and an awesome goodie bag with extra. Such a wonderful event. And when I asked Nick earlier what made him want to get involved with this, he said it was Chris Young, a former Padres catcher, who asked him to come out and do this event about four years ago. And he took a guy around who was 13 years old, guys, and had never owned his own pair of shoes. And Nick said at that moment, I knew this was something I wanted to be involved in because it's things like that that you can just take for granted. And it made this, this kid's eyes and face light up, he said, when he handed him those shoes and said, yeah, they're yours, buddy, and he gets to do that now. He and his wife, Amy, big participants in the shopping spree every year. That's yeah, a great story, yo. Thank you, Kelly. And hats off to Huntley and all the Padres, and for that matter, almost all the major league teams. Every player has yep. a, a charity that uh, they very seriously fund, and not only with their monies, but with their time. Yeah. Tell you what, that goes a long way. Just saying hi, going to visit somebody. Uh, have you ever been to the Monarch School, Tony? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's, it's quite an experience. Dexter Fowler. One and one to count on the leadoff man who's doubled and lined to right. Bert Smith into his fifth inning. He's retired the last six Rockies. Mayhew and then to Lewitsky to follow here in the fifth. That's a good pitch right there. A 
Fowler walks more than any Rocky 64 times this year. And he's on again. Lead off walk. Well, fans, Fox Sports 1, you've heard about it, right? It's available on all TV providers. But if you want to know where it's at in your area, just go to foxsports1.com to find out what channel Fox Sports 1 is on in your area. It's easy. You want to watch that, right? Because it's the best. Check it out. 1,652 channels? <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same thing, Dick. <laughs> You remember when I grew up, we had in Detroit, we had three channels, and then if you're lucky, you could get Windsor, Ontario for a fourth. If the wind was blowing right, right? CKLW in Windsor. <laughs> you had ABC, CBS, NBC. That was about it. Now it's uh, Tim Stauffer warming up again. Yeah, there's just so much good material, too. I mean, things like the History Channel, Discovery yeah. Channel, yeah. And, you know, along with the entertainment and sports. Oh, the competition for for eyeballs is tough. Mm -hmm. So right though, it's, you know, it's made a whole lot of sports properties prosperous, a whole lot more prosperous. That's for certain. Because there's more more channel zealing to be seen. Well, Mayhew who has an infield hit and a double. He's emerging as the player that they hoped he would be. Lanky second baseman. He's 6'4. They thought he'd hit with more power. He hasn't. Two home runs this year. He's got that average going up into the mid 280s. Yeah, this Rockies team got some really good young players, Mayhew and Rutledge. Rosario is another young player. It's going to be interesting to see what, what Todd Helton decides to do at the end of the year. He decides to come back or, or retire. What do you think? Yeah, he said something to us in the meeting that I brought back flashbacks for me, and that was, you know, going on the road for, for <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> going on the road for two weeks. Yeah. And only getting two hits, that's kind of hard to live with. I, I think he's going to shut it down. I, 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 I feel like he might, too. And yeah. if he does, you know, it's going to open up a space for one of these young guys, Rutledge or LeMayhew. Franchise leaders, all-time, Tony. be tough to ever top those numbers. Todd uh, Helton. I get more runes than me, more runs than me, more doubles. That's one of those, the lines for Tony Gwynn. Uh, let's face it, nobody's going to break that. As a Padre? No, they're they're there to be broken. You just have to play here. No, I'll bet you my, I'll bet you the <laughs> bag of donuts I buy tomorrow, Saturday morning. Well, 30 years there's from now, they might not be worth what you pay for. There's, <laughs> there's no. No Padre is going to break those numbers that you put up. Hilton turned 40 last month. University of Tennessee, where he was a backup to a guy, Peyton Manning. Don't know what ever happened to him. <laughs> How about seven touchdown passes last night yeah. for Manning? You know, I loved Todd's honesty when I asked him about playing in the NFL. You think he could have played in the NFL? He goes, no, no way. Not fast enough, not big enough. Mayhew hanging tough. 82 pitches now for young Bert Smith. Now the Padres, a couple of their teams in the playoffs in the Midwest League. Fort Wayne won both of their first round games against Bowling Green, so they're in the best of three now against South Bend. And uh, in the Texas League, San Antonio splitting the first two games with Corpus Christi. That's the best three of five. They're home tonight, San Antonio, after uh, splitting the first two at Corpus Christi. It's part of the experience, too, Tony, even though it's the minor leagues to be in the playoffs. Yep. 
you know the fans in those towns care deeply about how they've done there. They're cheering as if it is the World Series. Mm -hmm. And it's an environment that you hope guys like playing in. And as they move up the ladder that they will want to continue to play in that kind of environment. Two and two, LeMayhew. Well, that's been quite an at bat for him. He's forcing Burke Smith to throw a lot of pitches. That's so the next one will be 85. This will be the ninth pitch of oh, the eighth pitch of this at bat. Fowler, good base runner, not a bad spot for a little run and hit. Yep. There he goes. Long drive to left field, but fortunately that is foul by about 15 feet. He hammered that ball. And Mayhew seems to be the one guy in this lineup who's seeing the ball really good on Smith. Went up into that second tier right against the brick wall. Of the Western Metal Supply Company. If I was pitching right now, I'd hold and set for a long count here. See if he gets a little froggy over at first base. Swung on and missed the throw to second base. It is a no. Safe is the call. So Daniel thought he had to strike him out, throw him out. I don't know if it's, he tagged him high. I just don't know if his foot got to the bag before the tag was put on. Good changeup by Smith. One minute he's a throw. He's got him. I don't know if it's looks like he's out. I don't know if his foot got to the bag or not. No, well, it's it's on the bag. Yeah. Good call. Yep. Very very close, but I think you're right, Tony. I think it was safe. Foot on the bag, then the tag. Yep. Number 19 for Fowler. Stolen base. And that sets it up for Tula Whiskey and Fowler shaking a bit by the slide and the tag. Every time you see Fowler, that 24 and the way he's built, it's Cameron Maben's twin. Yeah. Maben, by the way, has had his wrist surgery. That was this morning. Season's over, playing only 14 games. A tough year for Cameron. Might have taken them. Sedeno's knee in the shoulder. Well, you know, his left knee went into that bag pretty yeah. good, too. Let's focus on the left knee, the leg underneath. As he goes into the bag, right there, the foot gets caught to Sedeno's foot, and then the knee goes in the bag. And then it kind of gets pretzled around there. That knee, knee's not supposed to bend like that, is it? Nope. He hard, had a hard time getting his foot back flat on the ground again, too. Because he... So in this 2-1 game, top of the fifth, walk and a steal for Fowler sets the table for Tulowitzki and Kadair, two 300 hitters. Tulowitzki, a walk and an RBI double tonight. Almost a home run off the center field wall, about a foot and a half shy of a 396 foot homer. Since 2007, no one close as the shortstops in the big leagues to drive in the runs that Tulowitzki has. Sail over our heads into the top tier. Got to get that down. Now, tomorrow night, 5 o'clock, here on Fox Sports San Diego. Game two, it'll be Tyson Ross for the Padres against Tyler Chatwood, who's having a good season. Chatwood, 7 and 4. Along with the East Lake All Stars being honored before the game, it's uh, Padres Luchador Mask Night. One and one to Tulo. Takes a fastball right there at 90. 
Sunday. 110 game, 12:30 our TV time. Ian Kennedy against Chad Bettis. 0-3, the young right-hander. California National Guard, and of course, Kids Fest Day in the park at the park with the face painting and the balloon artists and the bounce houses and lots of fun for the youngsters. Yes, sir. Strike three call. Number six. Number seven now for Bird Smith. Well, after falling behind Detroit to Lewinsky, battled back. First pitch breaking ball, ball one. Now it's about locating the fastball. He missed. To Lewinsky couldn't get the top hand. He's definitely guessing something there, it looked like. And then knee high fastball. Look at that. That's exactly where you want it. Fox Tracks had it right on the bottom line. Nice stick right there by Nick Hundley. Seven strikeouts for Smith, and here's Kadire. Kadire, an RBI on a ground out in the first inning. That's the difference in the game now, 2 1. Grounded to short his last time. This could be a different September here for Kadire in the race for a batting championship. Chris Johnson with Atlanta. Every at bat gets to be kind of important to get opportunity here to you know, even out your average for the night. He's 0 for 2. Best he'd ever hit with Minnesota 284. He did that twice. Started tonight at 331. That's really putting it together yep. late in your career. He's 33 years of age. You see the leaders there in the National League. Yadier Molina. You know, Tony, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But how does that happen? The guy. Every year there's a couple of guys that have years that you just don't see it come. Yeah. Well, Chris Johnson was a throw in in that deal. Yeah. Right? How about that? And he was yeah. leading the league for the majority of the, league, of the year. Justin Upton was the big name, and they threw in Chris Johnson. Here's Johnson almost well, he could win the bag. Yep. You know, Michael Kadar has been a good hitter for a long time, and this year he just kind of puts it all together. Yep. First base open here. Now, here Molina was a guy that never really hit for average, but you know, called a good game, and, and, and now it's, you know, it's kind of flipped over the offense and switched and become a good hitter, too. All four, so a couple of walks. Here in the fifth inning. Runners at first and second. Four walks for Smith and seven strikeouts. That pitch count up to 95. Darren Balsley out as Ruline Rosario, who has struck out twice as the batter. Well, working slowly and falling behind. A lot of pitches. You know, a lot of times when Darren goes out there to talk to the pitchers, he'll just tell them, hey, let's start off this guy with this certain pitch. Two outs. You got to force it any base, first and second. And we all know that Rosario loves the fastball. I mean, let's face it, loves the fastball. He'll turn on that inside fastball. We saw that in Colorado. Todd Helton on deck. Fowler walked, stole second. Now a two out walk to Kadire. High fly ball, right field. Venable cruising toward the line, and that'll do it. The Rockies lead a couple. We're at the halfway mark in this four and a half innings in the book.
Good job by Bird Smith. Gave up the two runs in the first inning, and this man won the Casio. Gave up the leadoff home run, Venable in the first, and a triple by DeNorthia, but not allowed foul since. Retiring 12 straight. No base runners. Five strikeouts. Padres trying to get something cooking here in the bottom of the fifth inning. It'll be Amarista, Cedeno, and Hundley with a pitcher spot due fourth with 96 pitches already banked by Burt Smith. One would guess that his night is over. And hope that the Padres get him a couple of runs here so he might be able to pick up a major league win. Yeah. yeah. See if we can get Nicasio out of the stretch. He's been out of stretch since the first inning. Amaris to fly to left is only at bat. One and one. Nicasio, relatively young, just 26. That ball hit well, but too high. Fowler waiting for it to come down in center field. 13 straight retired. Sedeno struck out his first time. Well, I feel those first two hitters, I thought it was going to be a hit fest for the Padres. Talking about making an adjustment. Daniels hit safely in 11 of the last 12 games. 333 pace, a couple of home runs. Went around one and two. Nice late breaking slider there by Picasso. Ooh, that's a good pitch. Yep. Man. That wasn't his best fastball, even yeah, though it's only 90 miles an hour, but perfect location. Yeah, that, that's a strike, I think. It's the glove. There's a base hit to right center. So finally the Padres have Base runner after 13 straight outs. And we'll see how Nicasio works from the stretch. He had to pitch to only one. Well, the, all three batters in the uh, first inning after the triple by the Northfield. But even then, with a man at third, I can't remember if he worked from the stretch or a full one. Day. Yeah. So Daniel continues to give the Padres. A little more hitting than they might have expected. The 220 average coming uh, out of Houston. Nick Hundley. We outside. Logan Forsyth apparently will hit for Bert Smith. Brad Boxberger now getting loose in the bullpen. Tim Stauffer has been up three times tonight. I think a bunch of the Padre players thought that last move the first was a block because guys were streaming on the in the dugout. Oh, well, he's not moving. Dave, Rob Dave yeah. Roberts is going to talk to the first base umpire Miller. Watch the back foot on the rubber. Or is he moving his front foot yeah. first? Well, the Rockies oh, lead the major leagues. Yeah, did you see the knee? Was this he buckling his knee? Yes, yeah. both of them. Yeah. They lead the uh, major leagues in box, the Rockies. So, our buddy, demonstrate what Nicasio's doing. Well, I'd like to focus 
on this knee right here. Roll it, Robbie. Watch how he buckles it. So he kind of buckles it a little bit before he goes over. That's a B A L K. Yeah. You see Dave Roberts going right up to the umpire Miller at first. Meanwhile, Henley looks at a couple of strikes and it's now one and two. Two one the score. Rockies got two in the first. Doubled by Fowler and a Mayhew infield hit. Double knocked in a run to Lewitsky and a ground out the other off the Dyer's bat. Venable homer for the Padres. Watch out. That one just beyond the dugout. They were trying to take a shot at hitting the hole in right field. The right field. Four hits for the Rockies. Uh, Cedeno's hit the third off Nicasio for San Diego. Line drive, base hit to left. Cedeno will hold it second. The Padres back to back hits here in the fifth inning. And that'll bring up the pinch hitter foresight. That's a hanging slider. A bad breaking ball being a curveball, but Nick elevating that and just dumping into shallow left center or left field. Foresight called back by Bud Black, and he's going to go with the veteran Katze. One home run as a pinch hitter this year was against the Rockies. In Colorado, going the opposite way, left center field. That's a good friend of mine once said that would be some kind of nice. <laughs> that would be. I love the three run <laughs> shot. I love the three run homer. Two on with one out here in the fifth. The Padres trying to get back at the Rockies 2 1 lead. Daniel and Hundley back to back singles with one gone in the fifth. According to my notes, this is the uh, first time that Conte has faced Nicasio. He takes a strike, a fastball at 89. Lead off hitter Venable on deck. He's got the count two and one. The action pitch coming up with a couple of men on. Tying run there at second base and Venable with a home run on deck. See, this is where when he's gotten to this count, he's thrown the slider. He hadn't backdoored he had it too. Backdoored it, threw one down and in to Will Venable, but he hadn't given in and thrown a fast one. Goes with the fastball there and misses upstairs three and one. Maybe this out of the stretch has gotten him a little bit out of his rhythm here because he'd been, his control had been pretty good up until this point. As it walked the man. And now you go from uh, rolling along to being in a little bit of trouble here. Three one. You could start the runners here. Constant 
Barkley makes enough contact here where you could do that if you'd like. Ball four. The bases are loaded. First walk of the night from Juan Nicasio. That moves Cedeno. The tying run over to third. Hundley, the go-ahead score to second. Katze joins them. A padre over every pillow with one out and Venable, the hitter. Venable with a golf shot. One iron home run the first time up into the jack deck and right. Oh, good swing there. Fastball. Cedeno the tying run. Hundley the go ahead score and Katsi at first. Tied him up. Put that down by the label. Made to order double play ball. There's one. There's two. Four, six, three. The room service double play. And the Padres are denied. Bases loaded with one out. And they again have failed to take advantage of scoring on and out. Wind it all you could ask just one rough spot that was at the top of the game when he gave up a couple of doubles and an infield hit in the two Colorado runs but he struck out seven walked four solid outing by the 23 year old right hander. There's his final line two runs on four hits. He really hung in there after that first inning. It was all about getting the feel for the changeup I thought yeah. guys he threw some breaking balls in there nicely. But uh, when push came to shove, he threw changeups behind the count. He threw him first pitch of the at bat, and the first pitch of the at bat to Willie Willie Rosario, with first and second for his last inning was a changeup, and he popped him up to right field. Well, the Padres, meanwhile, not many opportunities they had. Denorfi at third with no one out in the first inning and couldn't score him, and now the base is loaded with one out and uh, made to order double play ball off the bat of Venable. Close out the fifth inning. Todd Helton and Rutledge and Blackman to bat for the Rockies here in the sixth. Tim Stauffer takes over for Bert Smith. And a look at our Firestone Complete Auto Care Extra Mile Index. Most career hits playing for just one franchise. Stan Musial, Carl Yastrzemski top the list. But our own Tony Gwynn's there, number seven, and Todd Helton now the 20th player. Baseball history with 2,500 hits, all with one team. It's 
Yeah, isn't that cool? On one team. Looks good. It's all. Sure. Your baseball card is all lined yeah, up. That's looks great. great. I think that's awesome. Obviously, no regrets in your career. None, none whatsoever. Swing and a miss, and it's two and two now to, to Helton. Uh, Helton. Can see what he did. He was off of his right hand. He kind of shook his right hand. I don't know whether he was tweaked on the swing or what. Meanwhile, we get news from uh, the San Francisco Arizona game that Yus Miro Petit of the Giants is working on a perfect game through seven innings against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Two and two. Helton has walked and grounded to second tonight. He's two, Padres one, top of the sixth. Padres like to get into that Colorado bullpen since the All Star break. They're the worst in the National League, a 4 2 5 ERA for their relief core. They've given up 23 runs the last nine games. There's a pitcher here where Helton drives you crazy. He fouls off so many pitches. Count goes full. Rutledge and Blackman waiting their turn here in the top of the sixth inning. Ninth pitch of this at bat coming up. Line to left, right at Denorthia. Well, the great interview. I hope you saw it. You'll probably see it again in the post game show, but uh, obviously, great admiration, Todd Helton. A man who helped him when he was a rookie, Tony Gwynn. Obviously, it's hitting the ball the other way, taking the ball where it's pitched. Um, you know, looking at the guy who invented 5.5, you know, so, um, you know, I, I've been a fan of Tony's from, from, from near and far, and, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's great to be able to sit down with you right now. You know, I, I and um, the last time I did it, um, yeah, meant a lot too. You, know, you could see the emotion. Todd was really touched by just being in your presence, Tony. That's a great commendation. Nice to see that a 40-year-old appreciating the the game and the people who set standards. You know, and you have often felt this way that that if I were running a franchise in any sport, one of the things I would do is give that player a test on the history of the sport. Mm -hmm. and if they know the history of the game, that means they want to be part of the history. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that too. I really am. I think we all come into this game thinking we know something about it, but not everything. And in order to get better, you have to ask questions, and there has to be somebody there who's willing to answer. And and I have to tell you, when I first came up, it wasn't always that way. Ground ball right to Blanks, bobbles it, but able to pick it up and flip it to Stoffer. And Rutledge just out three one. Now there's a, there was a. A time when the veteran ball players they didn't want some young kid taking their yep. their wallet. You know, hey, I don't want you to be good. I'm going to keep playing. Yep, that's exactly right. And 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 in those situations, the best way to go about your business was you keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut. And I used to go out and I'd watch guys take batting practice, and you know, watch the visiting teams take batting practice if I had a chance to. And, you know, if there was somebody who was willing to talk to me, I'd ask questions. Rock Carew was one of the first guys uh, who played expedition game in Yuma. And I just went up to him, Mr. Carew, how you doing? I've been a fan of yours my whole life. You know. Mr. And, Carew. And that's how, to, that's how our conversation, that's how our friendship started. Sure. And you're still at the Hall of Fame affair as you. That's who you yeah, said was, huh? Rod Carew. And I tell everybody that uh, some of the stuff he imparted on me early in my career led me to become the hitter that I became. But... The same things I tell you guys all the time up here. He said, swing at strikes. Get a ball that you can handle. Don't try to do too much with it. Just put your best swing on it. 
And he says, the more at bats you get, the more confident you'll be in your game plan and the things that you try to do. And he's right. Well, just to go back and not to uh, not to rub it on uh, Will Venable with the bases loaded. The pitch is low and away outside. Yep. A pitch that ached to be hit to left field, but he tried to pull it and yep. became a double play. And he hit it sharply, he hit, but he hit it right at the second base, which was right where he was playing in case you tried to hook a ball where he threw it. And you learn. Those are things that you learn, especially with runners in scoring position, because it's a whole lot different. It's a whole different game. Wow, that rattled in and around the Colorado dugout. He got into the back wall and Rosario had to hit the deck. Tough enough when I have to go out there with a mask on. <laughs> Do I have to wear a mask in the dugout too? One and two the count on Blackman who is grounded out and flight out. Swing and a miss strike three. Stoffer works a perfect sixth inning. Padres trail by one. It'll be Denorfia, then Jerko, and Headley in the bottom of the sixth. Still trailing two to one, but of course looking to tack on here as Chris Norfia leads off the inning. And it is time now for our, us to check in with our AT&T Twitter poll results. We ask you, who is the best shortstop in the majors right now? And Dickenberg said, no question, it's Troy Tolowitzki. And our viewers tend to agree with 37%, Desmond 21%, Segura 23%. And Simmons rounding out the bottom there with 19%. But Dick, man, you hit it right on the head tonight. Yeah, pretty uh, good sampling, though. And a lot of votes for the other players. Yeah. Professor, I think if I was on the mound and I'd look over my right shoulder, I'd feel pretty darn good to see number two out there short. Corey Dickerson comes into the game in left field, and left fielder Blackman moves to center. Dexter Fowler, who came up ouchy on that uh, slide into second base, has been taken out. Kristen Orfia tripled in the first inning with no one out, but Padres couldn't get him home. Takes it high, one and one. Struck out, took a third strike his last time. Nicasio now at 88 pitches. Check swing, two and one. He's a good pitches down and away tonight. The right hand hitter just hadn't been able to get the call. But you know, both pitchers, Tony, yeah. I think tonight have thrown knee high fastballs. Uh, both of them, and they just haven't gotten that call consistently. Well, Bill Scott's been a, a tough umpire on the pitchers tonight. I think I give Dale, Dale Scott credit for it. See how far inside he is on the catcher? Mm -hmm. He's getting a good look at that ball. Ball four and the Northfield lead off one. See if that comes around to pay off for the Padres. 
it so often does a third of the time when you walk the leadoff man he's going to score. Second walk allowed by Nicasio. Will uh, cause the manager to scratch his bald pate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hat off with the pacing. It's, either, right. it's either that or you let it go gray because it's <laughs> it's going to change color. Jerko has struck out and popped up. They play him a couple of steps into right center. Big hole in left center field. 89 strike. There's that number we talked about earlier. We go six innings, 11 and 2 this year. Or in his career, rather. 3 and 12. If he doesn't make it through six. This is the sixth inning. Amazing numbers. Tapped by the mound. Tough play. Third baseman gets him. Now going back to third. They throw it away. Here comes the runner to the plate. Going to be close. He's in there. Ties it up. Tenorfia scrambling around the bases. Oh, my. And what an effort by Rosario to go down and try to cover third and get that carom off the box seat railing and make a pretty good throw to Nicasio. A great play here by the Mayhew. Great base running by the Northfield. And Helton tried to hit Rosario on the run. He makes a great effort on the throw. What a slide by Denorfia. What a great slide by Denorfia to the inside. That's not an easy slide, it's changing not. direction it's like not. that, and then having to reach back. You know, the whole play, keys on, you mentioned Tony, Todd Helton thrown to a moving target. Yeah. There was nobody stationed at third base. And Denorfia brilliantly saw that yeah. and gambled on making it first to third on the ground out. And then Helton's throw, no one there to catch it. Goes off the barrier and caroms and look at how far Rosario was. He was uh, yep. 30 feet, 40 feet beyond third base and almost threw him out from his knees. That was so play to tie it up at two. Well, you got to give help and credit. I mean, he gets an error on the play, but he's trying to hit Rosario on the dead yeah. run to cover third. With the old quarterback at Tennessee, yeah. they're tough enough to hit a receiver <laughs> over the middle. But yeah, he let him a little bit too far <laughs> over the middle. And Rosario made a great play taking that throw off the wall and making a quick throw to home. Headley. One ball and two strikes now. He struck out both times up against Nicasio. You know, guys, I'm really surprised that helped even threw that ball. Yeah, he could have eaten it. But the competitive nature of the athlete is now you're going to try and get yeah. him. Yeah, you're not going to you're not going to go to first to third on me. I'm going to make a perfect throw. Struck him out again. Three times up. Three times struck out as Headley. Check this out. He tried to lead him and he leads yeah. him too far. And then Rosario with a sliding throw. If it's a split second quicker, they're going to have a play at the plate. But great base running by Denorfia. Look at Rosario. Now, it's a spectacular yeah. effort by him, and you can't make a better slide than Denorfia if he runs a straight line there. Nicasio had his shot at tagging him yeah. up. And credit Nicasio for covering home plate, yeah. knowing that his catcher was out of the picture. <laughs> well, here we are in September and hadn't seen one like that oh, this year. Home run right there. <laughs> yeah, it's tied at two. And Chris Denorfia was the guy standing at third with nobody out who didn't move in the first, so he just said, forget it, I'm going to take a shot. Lanks takes strike two. Locasio with six strikeouts tonight. He's punched out Headley three of those. Well, the Heart and Hustle Award, he's lived up to it tonight in his play, Denorfia. Langs just gets a piece of that one. In case you're not, have not been with us from the very start. Uh, each major league team, their alumni, vote for the player on the current team that deserves the Heart and Hustle Award, recognizing a team player of spirit, traditions of the game, and Denorfia 
was so honored again tonight. And he has shown all of that in his play. Yes, he has. Kittle run through a brick wall for you. Man, he tells you the story. Because he's been <laughs> he's been in the dirt all night tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the one story that sticks out for me with Chris, I had an interview with him earlier, is when he said one of his first jobs was answering phones at the uh, construction company that his dad worked at. And you could tell by the way he plays, he doesn't want to answer phones anymore. <laughs> He's going to leave it all out there. Well, then his uh, perseverance to stay in the game yeah, when yeah. he was a you know lifetime minor leaguer, finally got a shot with the Padres four years ago, 2010. It's just one of those guys you can count on to give all he has in the dirt again and the count two and two to Kyle Blanks. You know, man, not blessed with great speed, size, strength, but he's, he's done it. And that's why the, you know, the hustle is, is part of his game. Yeah. Not that they don't tr all try, but he epitomizes that uh, great word in this game, hustle. Fans recognize it. Out of play. Blanks is flying to right and grounded to short. Struck him out. And that's the seventh strikeout, but the Padres steal a run here in the sixth inning. On a walk, a ground out, a daring play by Denorfia, the error by Helton, and we're tied at two. Rockies and Padres squaring off. Mark and Mike with you working on the post game show. Mr. Hart and Hustle gets the tying run across. Yeah, he got the award today. What a great read. And you, it's a tough play for the infielders. That's the reason why he tried to advance that. But that is the difference maker tying this ball game up. So that's where we stand here at the top of the seventh inning. When we see in the post game show, you're going to hear from Buddy Black. We'll have all the offense and the pitching covered for you. And guys, we're going to play a little bit more of that Todd Helton interview that was so good. It was in the pregame show. Tony Gwynn, Mark Grant talking it over with a man who has 17 years in the big leagues may earn himself a trip to the Hall of Fame. Yeah that's a uh, can't miss if you didn't see it in our Padre uh, pregame show. Be sure to stay with us after the action tonight. Fascinating interview. Featuring Tony Gwynn Mark Grant with all the right questions and Todd Helton. Uh, you could just feel the warmth of oh, yeah. Helton's uh, you know, love for what Tony Gwynn has meant to his career and to baseball. Two strikes now. Ryan Wheeler is the pinch hitter against Tim Stauffer. It's Stauffer's game now as he and the bullpen for the Rockies will take it the rest of the way. Corey Dickerson will follow and then uh, DJ LeMahieu for the Rockies. 
swing and a miss strike three. Second strikeout for Stauffer so that gives the Padres nine strikeouts here in the game. Tim Stauffer taking the rock and going after these rocky hitters with the four seam fastball that even four seam fastball starts in a little bit up around the Colorado on the chest. Well, Tim not afraid to be aggressive and pound that strike zone with all of his pitches. Getting a word from the clubhouse that Dexter Fowler, Fowler re aggravated the left knee injury. That's why he was taken out on that slide at second base. So Dickerson takes over for him. Good numbers for Dickerson, 298. Under the game up in uh, Colorado, he had three of the most unusual hits you could imagine. They did everything but. Uh, Turn around and swing for the barrel end of the bat and hit it with a handle and get a base hit. <laughs> I mean, it, it was, was criminal. It was criminal. It really was. It really was. But they all count. Here's the slide by Fowler that aggravated the uh, left knee. Yeah. As you surmised, Mark Grant. One ball, one strike. But Dickerson does get a lot of his hits to the opposite field. And apparently, young Pettit or Petit is one out away from a perfect game in San Francisco against Arizona. We'll have details of that as well on our post game show. That's in San Francisco. Wow. Yep. Perfect yes. game there two years in a row. Are yep. you kidding me? 87 pitches. Yes. Mero Petit. A call up here in September. See that's why you know any time a pitcher takes the hill. You've got a chance of throwing a no no a perfect game. You just don't you don't have to have no hit stuff right. Or perfect game stuff. Another foul off to the left. The Padres pitching tonight, producing nine strikeouts, seven by Smith, two for Stauffer. If the San Diego gets one more, it'll be an all time franchise record of five consecutive games where the pitching staff has struck out at least 10. See, I want to believe him, Mud, when you say that any night is possible. What's that? Any time a pitcher goes out on the mound, it's possible. I, I really would like to believe that. You don't think it's possible? Well, we have not thrown a no hitter yet. <laughs> We're the only why. franchise in all of baseball not to have thrown a no hitter. No luck. Not enough luck. Man. Look at all the great arms. Four seasons. Look at now. all the great arms that have passed through here. I know. I know. Look at all the great arms that have passed Jimmy through Jones. here. Jimmy Jones. And throw no hitter somewhere else. Jimmy Jones. Line to first baseman blanks. They so finally pulled something after fouling off several off to the left. Hit that one on the button, but blanks with a big glove to snare it. I guarantee you there's a play like this tonight. Yes, Mary Petit's outing. A line oh, yeah. drive just like oh. that right at the glove. Oh, I agree. Get back to Jimmy Jones. Major League debut. You were there, weren't you? Yeah. One hitter, Astrodome. Who got the triple? Yeah. One hit, Bob Nepper. Really? The opposing pitcher. Bad luck. <laughs> I've seen a few of those, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it's I saw, gonna happen. I saw, oh, I saw yeah. Nolan Ryan four of his and and uh, I think it was eleven or twelve one hitters. You talk about two outs, totally dominating. He doesn't have a perfect game, of course he always walked four or five. One out away from another no hitter at Anaheim Stadium. A fly he jams the hitter so miserably that it isn't even a legitimate major league fly ball on the infield. Just a soft pop fly. Dave Chalk at short, Rudy Mayoli look at each other, and the ball lands right at second base uh. for a base hit. <laughs> Ground ball to short. Inning over. Stauffer. Six up, six down. And we're at the stretch half of the seventh. And tonight, USAA. We'd like to pay special recognition to all of our service members at home and abroad.
Park two outs in the ninth inning. Eric Chavez to right field. Hunter Pence can't quite make the diving catch. It's the kind of play he did make against Amarista in Lincecum's no-hitter. That was for a perfect game. The next batter makes an out, and uh, the Giants' the young right-hander, Yosemary Petit, settles for a one-hit shutout. 28 batters faced. Oh, my. Wow. wow. What a great night, huh? And that close, right? Yep. Hunter Pence, what, inches away from snagging that ball off the turf for a perfect game. So the Giants beat Arizona, and Petit almost a perfecto. Meanwhile, here at Petco, a 2-2 tie, and... Uh, Wilton Lopez comes in to pitch for the Colorado Rockies, replacing Juan Nicasio. Nicasio, six innings, two runs, one earned, four hits, two walks, seven strikeouts. And Marista has flied out twice. Lopez, two and four is record. 405 ERA and the hitters batting almost 300 against him. Two strikes on Amarista. Luke Gregerson getting ready. Luke is going to be the host on Sunday on Fox Sports San Diego, a, a charity poker tournament that's going to involve a lot of the Padres. Right back to the mound, but easy comebacker and Amarista out one three. Ronnie Cedeno has a single and two trips. He's got their runs in the first inning off starter Bert Smith, a double by Fowler, infield hit LeMayhew, Tulowitzki doubled off to the center field fence. It's slicing into foul territory off first. Helton can't get in there. That scored one run, and Kadair grounded out for the second run. So Bert Smith gives up his two runs in the first inning, then went five full, gave up only four hits, walked four, struck out seven. Padres got a run back immediately as the leadoff hitter in the first inning, Venable, lined a home run over the right field wall. The Norfia followed with a triple, no one out, but they couldn't get him in. And the Padres scored the tying run in the sixth inning without the aid of a base hit. A walk leading off to the Norfia. And on a ground out to third by Jerko, a soft ground out. De Norfia gambled, went from first to third. Helton's throw went wild, and De Norfia got up and scrambled in head first. With a great slide to hit home plate before a tag to tie it up at two. Terrific play. Ninety-five. Lopez pounding the strike zone yeah. with that fastball, huh? We'll get up to 95, 96. Live arm from the right hander. The sick piece at 91, 92, and then yeah, the high cheddar. Up the middle, and that ball trickles into center field for a base hit. So Daniel with a couple more hits. He's going to be close to 300. Well, that's good hitting right there by Daniel. He didn't try to do too much with this. He just laid the barrel of the bat on the baseball. The bouncer right back up the middle. Nothing special. The biggest holes in the diamond is right up the middle. He goes up the middle for the base hit. Yeah, with that sinker ball, you think that's a shortstop and third base are playing a little bit over to pull because they're trying to you know hook that ball. Yep. A good job of keeping that ball at the center of the diamond. Nick Hundley is singled and grounded to the third baseman LeMahieu. 92 on that fastball had a lot of dive yeah. to it. That's that sinker Tony was talking yeah. about. It's a little extra. He adds a little extra to that. You can see the finger pressure when he wants that ball down in the zone. Raymond Fuentes is on deck for the Padres. Pitcher spot. And that could be two. To Lewitsky, Rutledge, Helton, a 6 4 3 double play. Rockies have turned a couple tonight. So after seven at Petco Park, Padres two.
Um, Rockies too. game weekend series and time now from Petco Park for our San Diego fans of the game. Happy to have you here on a Friday night. Beautiful night for baseball. Hey, look at those guys getting ready for Monday yeah. night. Uh, Rock of the 16 <laughs> ounces. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, this is a weather for 16 ounces. Huh? <laughs> Does that qualify as a social spark? Oh, absolutely. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Adult beverage. <laughs> Sand toys. Can't go wrong with those. Luke Gregerson to pitch the eighth inning. It'll be Tulowitzki, Kadire, and Rosario. Three right handed batters. A oh, better feel for the slider from Luke Gregerson here at sea level rather than in Colorado. But we're talking to Luke specifically in Colorado. So you just got to stay on that slider a little longer. Just a little bit, so he concentrated keeping it down in the zone. Seems to have no problem here at Petco Park. Opponents only hitting 221 off cool hand Luke. Tulowitzki an RBI double in the first. He walked in the third, struck out looking in the fifth. So Luke uh, will host this charity poker tournament at the Fox Sports San Diego Grill on Sunday. The doors open at 5. I guess it's open to the public. And at 6 o'clock, the tournament begins, and a lot of Padres will be involved. First pitch misses. You a poker player, Tony? I used to play a little bit <laughs> in the uh, in the late in my later days. I say I say that Bruce Bochy was like the leader of the back. Was he good? Bruce, oh. Kevin Towers, Wally Joyner. I mean, he had some yeah. some guys with some poker faces that were they were pretty good. <laughs> so it didn't work when you had a good hand. You went. <laughs> oh well, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I couldn't hide my excitement. Uh, I remember Kevin Towers got off a charter once, and I'm not going to mention the player's name, but he's talking to Boch, and I was kind of overhearing, and Kevin Towers says, "Boy." I got to sign so and so to a multi year deal. And I was like chiming in. And, I, and Boach goes, Watch that, Kiki. <laughs> and he says, He is the most stupidest card player I have ever played against. <laughs> oh, man. Priceless. <laughs> you learn a lot about guys when you play <laughs> poker with them. Especially you when you get all those pennies on the table. Oh, well, when you were talking about me, I mean, Kevin Towers, when he first started playing with us, he was like that. He couldn't. Tulowitzki lifts one to right field, and Venable is there. One away. Poor Kevin couldn't keep his excitement when he had a good hand, you know. And Wally Joyner and Boach, of course, 
two of the best poker faces in all <laughs> in all business. I remember Brett Boone would get a hand he'd show everybody. <laughs> hey, I got this. I'm still I'm still gonna win. Here's what I got. Gregerson to Kadair. Not going to run with a ground out in the first inning. Is grounded to short and walk. And this one pulled just foul past third. We talked about the slider from Luke Gregerson. If there's ever an inning, he's got to keep it down. To Lewitsky, fly it out to right. It was a good breaking slider yep. down away, yep. taken the other way. But Kadair leading the league going into this game, hitting. I didn't ask you, Matt, if you played yeah, poker, but I know you were a war champion. <laughs> fish. Go fish. Oh, wow. I yeah. bet you were tough, huh? I didn't have the attention span to play cards. I still don't. <laughs> I know that's a shocker to some people. Popped out of play, two strikes to count. I could be concentrating on one thing and somebody shines something shiny in my face. And I'm like, well, what? Totally distracted. I'd steal your ace and uh, exactly. could give you a yeah. three. Huh? Yeah. I'd still think I had a good hand. Oh, how nice. That was a nice gesture. Gentleman giving that kid a ball. Hey, look at those beer fest uh, shirts. That was part of the yeah. deal tonight. Swing and a miss. And Gregerson has that tenth strikeout of the night by Padre pitching. Well, you talk about expanding the strike zone. Luke Gregerson shows us there. He grips that slider. You can see the dot and that rotation for the slider. Kadire swung on and missed. Never happened before in Padre history. Five consecutive games. Pitching staff has struck out at least 10 batters. Or with the old guys. Mark. Yeah, that's a yep. nice little record for this group. Two outs to Rosario. Now we got to get on the no hit bid. We got to get that done. I get it done. And the cycle, too. Cycle, too. We, yeah. get, we still have plenty of time to get that done this year. You know, Tony, I was thinking, you playing all those years in right field, never got to play behind a no hitter. Yep. I mean, that's. Made the last out in a couple of them, though. <laughs> <laughs> you did really? Yeah. Who, who I did. Do you remember? That uh, I fly ball. He just missed that one. Got in. Talk about it. Shortstop Sedeno gives ground to Denorfia, and Gregerson works a one-two-three eighth inning. The Padres coming up with a pinch hitter to lead it off. Is the way the game should be played. You know, it's it's it's, a, it's the way I've been playing since I was a little kid. And and you know whether it's running into a wall or or diving or just running really hard and, and playing playing the game as hard as possible. It, it's to be recognized for that is very is very humbling. Kristen Norfia receiving his third.
third Heart and Hustle Award tonight. And we saw in the sixth inning as he tied things up at two, just why he is so deserving of that. And guys, I ask him, at what point in your career did that become a staple of who you were going to be as a player? Was it early, later? And he said, well, as a kid, come on, we, we all throw everything out there on the field every day. But in high school, maybe it's not so cool anymore to be the guy who's always doing hard work. But in college, he said, I had a coach who wouldn't accept anything less and that's when it really sank in and he said you just got to believe that's the kind of guy you're going to be and and that's exactly the way he plays every night Raymond Fuentes one pitch one out rounds to second base as the pinch hitter for Gregerson we're going to see Denorfia in this inning will Venable and then Denorfia Venable with a home run Ground out and grounded into a double play and uh, pitching change going to be made here as Walt Weiss makes the slow stroll to the mound. We'll be right back. Remind you that Padres baseball on Fox Sports San Diego is brought to you by Petco, where the healthy pets go. By Mossy Toyota, thousands of vehicles, one trusted name, Mossy.com. By your San Diego County Lexus dealer, inviting you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. You know, the uh, architecture there goes back to a fair, a Pan American fair in 1915, if I. My memory serves me correctly, and uh, it's part of the beauty of uh, the strolls through the our wonderful Balboa Park, all the theaters, the old Globe nearby, the Great Zoo, and the Aeronautical Museum, and the, and one of the outstanding sports museums for a single city. It, it would uh, be the equal of a National Sports Museum, yep. our Sports uh, Hall yep. of Champions, yep. the Breitbart Hall of Champions. You betcha. Josh Outman comes in to face the left handed hitting Will Venable, but uh, Venable has uh, found a way to get some big hits against left handed pitching this year. He's got a live arm, fastball, changeup slider, 89 to 96. He's a short armor, Outman. And with those stirrups and sanitaries and socks, take me back to my Pony League days back in 1976. <laughs> I like it. Oh, that is going old school, T. He's <laughs> got the old elastic down on the stirrup so you can really pull him up. It, that's the way you were with State, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I like the look, but not quite that high. I would take take about uh, three inches down. Yeah, when I got to the big leagues, you could see a whole lot of sock. I didn't have that much. That's sweet. Black showing right there, but yeah, that's a good look. And my kids at San Diego State, they're clamoring for that look again. Yeah. I think. It's, it all comes back. It's cyclical, yeah. isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the NBA player to have the really tight jersey, the real short shorts. I don't think they're ever going to go. High socks and the chucks <laughs> again. I don't think they're going to go back to that. One ball, one strike. Yeah, you look at the contrast, the uh, style of Outman, and then you look at Venable, the hitter. Yep. With the 
and pants well, right down to almost the spikes. Who knows what's under those pants? Well, let's see if Ogden continues to punch him away or pitch him away. And remember, Tony, you said taking the ball the opposite way. Extra base hit here to left center field. Ooh, good pitch. Three on one. Look at that. He's out hit. Uh, Much better now from the left side. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Six home runs this year against lefties with much fewer opportunities. Well, that pitch was out of the yep. zone. Let's see, he's keeping the ball away from him. He's not going to let him turn something around. Mm. He tried to. Right down the middle of the plate for that one. How do you account for the fact that suddenly he's having equal success against left handers? I, 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 I really don't know. To be honest, I think he's tried to go the other way more against left handers. And he's gotten some hits, and consequently, that's gotten his average up. But you know, these kind of situations right here are the situations where I'm looking and I'm, I think he's trying to pull instead of. You know, get, getting on base and being that threat. Houston streak, hoping that he can come in with the Padres in front. Because yeah, you would love the home run here to take the lead, but you know he can also take the walk and get yep. on base and steal the base, get himself in the scoring position. Let one of these uh, one of these right hand hitters come in here and, and drive in the winning run. There's a whole bunch of different ways to win a ball game here. You don't have to try to put it on your own shoulders. What's this all about, Mark? Well, either Tulowitzki is given a little refresher course to Outman. I mean, he knows Will Venable. He's seen him around. Rosario's been doing most of the talking tonight. I think it might be, hey, three and two. Do you want to? Throw? What do you feel comfortable throwing? Here's what I think you might want to throw. I mean, the majority of the pitches have been away. I wouldn't be surprised if he throws him a breaking ball here away. I think that 3 1 pitch was more in the middle than it was more or than it was away. Well, Tula Whiskey's kind of shading a little bit. I'm thinking breaking ball. There it is. All right, he stayed on that one pretty good. Yeah. He did. So you see the infield there kind of shading. And there he's That's working around that slider. slider. Yeah. So he's a little bit out in front, in front of it. But is that a pull swing or a swing to hit the ball the other way? It looked like a pull swing a little That's, bit. There you go. So here's where you can get in trouble. And he walks him. A one out walk. Good work by Venable to get aboard for Chris Denarchia. I could not believe he's going to try to sneak a heater inside 3 2. And you know why that's a great at bat, great plate appearance? Because Outman's ticked off. He's supposed to get lefties out. And Will Venable battled right there. You can see how upset Outman was. So pitching change made as Weiss goes to the mound and we pause for these words. First man up in the bottom of the first was Will Venable, and he lines a home run over the right field wall, his 21st of the year. And then after a walk, a slow ground ball. Look at Denorfia. He turns, goes to third, no one covering. 
throw by Helton bounces off the barrier. Good play made by Rosaria. Better slide by Denorfia. And that tied up the game. But last year, if I were voting for the top base running play of the season, it was the steal of home by Everett Cabrera against the Dodgers. That play gets my vote for the best base running play of the season yep. for the Padres. That was the darn good one. Showing that heart and soul. And Adam Adovino, we've seen him before. Hey, the lefty couldn't get Will Venable out. Might see some action here. In the dirt, and that had been a good one to try to steal as the ball knocked down by Rosario. A name that starts with O and ends with O, and so he wears zero on his uniform out of Vino. Fastball slider split. Shallow right field. Venable takes a turn and holds at second base. Well, the Padres now have the go-ahead score in position at second in the form of Venable. Whoa, that is really a wild. Yeah. Yeah. Todd Not even Helton. close. Yeah, Todd Helton didn't even give it an effort. It was so far over his head. And it's a bad luck for the Padres there because Ricochet kind of went up in the air. And and hit the ground. It didn't ricochet and rolled out towards right center field where normally would go. Kind of went up in the air and kind of. Walt Weiss looking at that saying, Where does it say you throw a ball like that from about 40 feet away? <laughs> <laughs> so a walk and an error, and the Padres with a chance to claim the lead for the first time tonight. Want to know the count to Chris Denorfia? Drops it to third. But Mayhew across. Oh, that almost pulled Hilton off the bag. In fact, the Padres thought it did. Here comes Bud Blackout. That's just not automatic. That was very close at first. As Venable moves to third. Yeah, it looked as if his foot was on the bag. Yeah. yeah. No, he was so quick with that though, wasn't he? Yep. As soon as the ball was in the glove, Will's reading the ball off the bat. Nobody covering. Well, the Padres now are 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. But there's still time. Jerko comes up with two outs and a man at third. To try to break this 2 2 tie. Getting the third. Now you can bring in the wild pitch, fast ball, Sidario. Jerko 0 for 3. And he grounds it to third. That's a fair ball. LeMahieu throws him out, and the Padres leave a man at third again. To the ninth. A 2 2 tie.
Colorado and they got three of those hits in the first inning tonight. Well, looking ahead tomorrow, 5 o'clock on Fox Sports San Diego, it will be Tyler Chatwood, 7 and 4 in the mound for the Rockies. And Tyson Ross will get the call for the Padres as he looks for his fourth win of the season. We hope you'll join us. It will also salute the East Lake All Stars. And you'll receive a Padres Luchador mask. You fans that arrive for the middle game of this three game series tonight. 20,437 here at Petco for game one. And man on third, two outs. Looking for something out over the plate. This is a slider. But you just came, you just came around. And again. Runners in scoring position. Those are the kind of pitches you're going to get a lot of. And, and you'll learn that, yeah, hey, sometimes it's okay to take a shot to get in the ball the other way. And I know. Fans, I sound like a broken record. I know it. I get it. But in order to be a good hitter at this level, that's you have to be willing. Not saying you have to do it all the time, but sometimes you have to be willing to take a ball the other way. That's that's how you eventually get what you want to hit. A singles like, as good as a ball rattling off in, the wall. In that situation, that's all you're trying to do is get that run in. Houston Street comes in. 2 2 tie, top of the ninth. It'll be Todd Hilton leading off, then Rutledge and Blackman for the Rockies. Hilton has walked, grounded out, and lined to left. High fly ball deep to center, and Marista going back, 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 and gone. Hilton homers over the center field fence, and the old man at 40 can still get the job done. Helton gives the Rockies a 3-2 lead. His 13th of the season. And I hate to say it, but here's a veteran guy. Went around. Doesn't try to do too much with it. Out over the plate. Doesn't try to pull it. Goes with it. Takes what you give him. And because he's done it for 17 years, he kind of has an idea that... Uh, to put a good swing on one, I might could back one out. Wow. That ends a long scoreless gain for right hander Houston Street, who's been very tough for a long time. Stingy indeed. Well, the main objective you have to think in the, in the tie score. Helton is looking for that first pitch fastball. He did get it. And once again, we talked about location tonight with Burt Smith. Houston Street would be the first one to tell you. Live ball shallow in center, and Amarista has this one. The home run against Street breaks a scoreless streak of 20 and a third. Scoreless innings, the longest by any Padre reliever all season. Sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake, and a good hitter is going to punish it. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning, the Padres will have Headley, Blanks, and Amarista scheduled. Charlie Blackman, 0 for 3, ground out, flied out, and struck out. While the Padres are 0 for 6, runners in scoring position three times, leaving a man at third. Once with no one out, another with only one out, and this last inning with two outs. That's a strike. Left center field, Amarista chases it down for the second out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Mr. Enberg. Jordan Pacheco is going to pinch hit for Todd Hilton. That was home run 367 in his outstanding career. 
It's the first time. It's hard to believe, but uh, since they were teammates, I guess it uh, does make sense. The first time Helton has ever faced Houston Street rudely. It's a home run off his former teammate. Here's another one of those young players, uh, Tony Gwynn, that part of the future for yeah. the Colorado Rockies, Pacheco. Oh, Rex Brothers heating up. The heart throwing left hander for the Rockies. Struck him out on three pitches, but the damage done by the leadoff hitter, Todd Helton, home run, Rockies lead 3 2. So Todd Helton with a home run adding to his grand total 367 and he's our Carl's Jr. Star of the game Todd Helton with a home run to break the 2 2 tie in the top of the ninth inning. And he went to the longest part of the yard clearing the center field fence. Sitting on a heater. Yep. Got it elevated. Straightaway center field. He's his 33rd career home run against the Pops. And that brings on Rex Brothers. 15 saves. Raphael Bettencourt has uh, had season ending surgery. Was the closer. Bro Brothers has taken over and his 1.52 ERA is the fourth lowest of any National League reliever. So the Padres are going to have to try to scramble here to. Get a tying runner more as Carlos Gonzalez, who can't bat because of that injured finger but can play defense, enters the game in left field. There are other changes, we'll give those to you. Nolan Arenado goes in at third base. The young third baseman, yet another part of the uh, future, and he's a good one. Guard in the line deep at third as Headley bats right handed for the first time. Left handed struck out three straight. 2 0 the count. Hits that one deep to left field. That's got plenty of distance. Headley has tied it up. Third decker. Chase Headley, and it's a new game again. That's three. Headley two and zero, oh, looking for a heater. He did not miss that. Mm. Puts the backspin on that baseball, and from the moment it left the bat, he knew he got that. 
Oh, uh, like Todd Helton getting the first pitch fastball. Chase Henley turning on the Rex Brothers fastball into the top. Into the top basket. That's a poke. A uh, 3 3 tie now in the bottom of the ninth inning as uh, the two leadoff hitters. Headley for the Padres. Hilton for Colorado with home runs. And the count now one and one to Kyle Blanks. Two and one. Well, that's the kind of home run hitting we saw from Headley in August and September yep. of last year. The ball is crushed. Talk about poker. Headley just said to help I'll raise you. Change up. Two and two. See that early? Look. Pe peeking inside the glove. Got the circle, circle change grip. Elton number 13, Headley number 10. That looked like a little breaky ball, a little slider. Peek inside the glove of Rex Brothers. Slider grip. Pitch before that, you could tell, you see the uh, the two middle fingers over the top of the baseball going to that changeup grip, turning it over, turn over, down and away to the right-handed hitting Kyle Blanks. Slider or fastball here. Fastball and away, three and two. DJ LeMahieu has moved from third to second. Arenado at third. In the infield is Arenado and Tulowitzki on the left side. LeMahieu at second, Hilton at first. The outfield is Gonzalez in left, Blackman in center, Kadire in right, and it's ball four. A home run, Henley. Perhaps unnerving the left hander brothers. And now the Padres have the winning run on with no one out. Well, pitching coach Jim Wright out to have a chat with Rex Brothers. You think Kyle Blanks isn't a big man? Dave Roberts just totally swallowed in his shadow there. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. That, I'm right behind you. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at the difference in Padres on Kyle's chest as opposed to the Padres on uh, Dave Roberts' chest. <laughs> See how Bud Black plays it here. The Rocky infield looking for the sacrifice bunt. Amarista 0 for 3 in the game. Bunt it down the first baseline. Takes high ball one. You got Helton holding on the runner. Arenado crashing at third base, way in on the grass. And Helton used to be really good at this play too. Yep. Not quite as quick. Ball two. 93 on that fastball. Oh, we've seen Helton before on a hard bunt. He'll come up firing the second base. If it's a hard enough bunt to get that lead runner. Here's a case too with a heady base runner. That first baseman leaves too early. You can get a big lead and uh, swipe a bat. And that's exactly what uh, the Rockies are thinking. Let's not uh, give Blanks too big a lead. Two and zero, oh, Amarista. With Cedeno on deck, a couple of hits for Cedeno tonight. Beautiful ball. Oh, beautiful. That might be a base hit. Hit it. For the sacrifice, the bunt so good. Amarista lakes it out for a base hit. So first and second with no one out. Doesn't he get executed? 
not necessarily wanting to go to third base, but he, he didn't it enough where he got a good chance to get a run and start. Arenado had to come in. Brothers ends up fielding it. Yep. And as you can see, he clearly beat that. So now first and second, no one out. And Cedeno steps up and the Rocky infield now looking for the sacrifice from him. Now it will be Helton that creeps in from first and Arenado has to hold his ground at third. So the bunch should be placed toward that third baseman. Yeah. Blanks and Amrys to lead away the square and the bunch to first base. That's what you don't want to oh. do but he doesn't go to third. For whatever reason Helton did not go to third. Maybe Arenado was late getting back to cover. So the sacrifice is successful. I don't think Helton had a good grip on that ball. Because he comes in and his first look is third base. And he tries to set his feet and he just yep. doesn't have a good enough grip on it. Arenado, right where when Helton looks up, Arenado's got his back turned. I don't know whether Helton looked at that and took into consideration. You know what? I better get the sure you know, out. I tried to hit. I tried to hit the catcher on the run. You're right, especially in light of what yeah, happened right. earlier on the Denorfia play. So a couple of sacrifices worked effectively. One for a base hit, and now the infield will draw in for Colorado. The outfield will come in at softball depth. They will walk Henley to load the bases. Hey, be aware for a wild one here. You never know. Kyle Blanks on third base. Of course, he can't take much of a lead. Arenado is holding him on like a first baseman. Jesus Guzman will be the man on the spot for the Padres, a chance to win it as he'll pinch hit for Houston Street. And Guzman will see whether or not he will face the left hander brothers or whether. Well, Weiss is going to go back to the bullpen and go righty against righty. Earlier this year against Toronto, Guzman with a walk off single. And the ever popular all purpose Guzman, good pinch hitter, can play the outfield first base. Getting the love from his teammates. Let's see if he can uh, deliver again. He will face the left hander brothers. With the base is loaded, infield in, outfield in. Padres have not been very successful with a man at third tonight in less than two outs. He swings at a ball in the dirt. Change up. Fastball hitter. He was geared for the fastball, yep. didn't get it. Again, this is where you zone out. Get a ball in the zone. I know you're pinch hitting. You know you want to hit the heater. Just get you a ball in the zone. The infield's in. The outfield's in. Lanks carrying the winning run at third. One and one. Highly entertaining game this Friday night affair. 20,437 here at Petco. 3-3 tie, one out, bases loaded, bottom of the ninth. Ground ball. Fair ball! And the Padres win it four to three. Uniform right off Guzman. It was Henley who tied it with a home run leading off the ninth, and Guzman with a single pass third. And the Padres have rallied in the bottom of the ninth to beat the Rockies four to three. Breaking ball outer half without got it. Third base umpire CB Buckner says fair ball over the bag. And with the infield in, no chance for Arenado to get over and back in that ball. Well, a lot of things happened in that inning 
Tony. You get the leadoff home run to tie it, but then Blanks works hard, gets the walk. Perfect punt, Amarista. Yep. So not just a sacrifice, then a good sacrifice. Although Helton appeared to have a play at third. And then the clutch uh, pinch hit by Guzman. Perfect placement, too, on that ball by Guzman because you know, it looked like when Mariano went to get it, it was in foul territory, but it went over the bag fair, and that's all they can. Yeah, they're grown men, but there's a lot of little boy in every one of them, and games like this bring it out. I just don't want to see anybody get hurt in these kind of situations because yeah. you know, Houston Street at the top of the pile feeling mighty good for Guzman getting him off the hook. Well, the energy taken out of this crowd by Helton's home run, top of the ninth, but Headley revived hope with his long home run. And Headley is with Kelly Crow. Thanks a lot, Dick. Well, Chase, there in the top, bottom of the ninth, excuse me, the 2 0 pitch coming to you. What do you see? Well, I finally got myself in a good count, and uh, you can take some chances when you get in those counts. Unfortunately, uh, he threw where I was looking, I put a good swing on him. And you know, you're really not in that position without Chris Denorfia there in the sixth inning. He gets the Heart and Hustle Award tonight. He shows us why. What's it like to play with a guy like that? He's a lot of fun, man. He brings a lot of energy every day that he plays. He's uh, he's always positive. He's always working hard. And, uh, you know, he brings so much to our club. It, it, it's not just what he does with the numbers you see. It's, the you know, the attitude he comes with, the effort that he puts in. And, uh, you know, just a great guy to play with. And, hey, Jesus Guzman getting the job done, his second walk-off of the season. How exciting was it? It's awesome. Uh, anytime you battle back and you win on walk-off fashion, it's great. But, uh, you know, their guy threw the ball really well today and uh, kind of kept us down. But we were able to fight and get one across. And, uh, you know, fortunately, we were able to have the big ending in the ninth. So it was, it was a great win for us. Awesome. Chase, enjoy this one. Thanks. Guys, back to you. And so Jesus Guzman delivers the game winning hit in a comeback ninth inning 4 3 victory for the San Diego Padres. Well, Mike, you got a lot to assimilate. This was a fun one. Oh, you bet. And the way it ended could not have been better for the Padres. What we see in just a moment, you'll hear from Buddy Black. We've got highlights from around baseball and a fantastic chat. Mark Grant, Tony Gwynn, and Todd Helton coming up.